if love Yogi is wrong, I don't want to be right. What would Socrates say to that? It tickles my face. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Goosies. I don't have hair. Oof. You got Marcos. That's not. No, that's not. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You do got me. Get over here, Marcos. Let me look at you. They don't want it. Toby and Leroy, ready to deploy. Had a hit her with a little dirt. Lizzo, but that was a decoy. Better head about me, boy. Okay. Yeah, Leroy and Toby. All to the show, man. Still some the with the show, and Till then, his head moon open. Sometimes go taste like a snowman. No proof I'm a lie about a boat in. No proof. Like I always wanted him. I never hated him. I never traded him. And if I did, I never traded him. You don't know what? What is a star? Like under the city, the driver's side floor. Just like a large, so many more. Ten in the morning, never a bar. Hey, ten in the morning, two to the peak. Nothing to you, but it's something to me. Handsome as ever. Cute as can be, you can watch on YouTube with you for free. This one time for the Twitch. This one time for the text. This one time for the phone line. Whole time, wonder what they gonna do next. You know, I, I just wish you guys would stop the quibbling. We have reached week 12 of 18 in the NFL season. It is November 21st, 2023. As you can tell, Tobin is not here. Leroy is here. Where you at, Leroy? I'm good. I'm good. We got a, we got ourselves a little Oreo cookie situation. <laughs> <laughs> My cousin Vladimir Lewis song with us right now. Figure you'll be here in just a little bit. When J Fig comes on, it'll be Oreo with double stuff. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about the narrative as we go into week 12 of 18 of the NFL season. The best team in the NFL, Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah, the team to beat though in the NFL, Kansas City Chiefs. They beat themselves last night. Let's I, be honest. But 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 there's a there's a very noticeable trend going on with Kansas City. What, One, they only play good when it really matters. No. Okay. No, well, that's no, what no. Been doing, but that's okay. One. One, they don't score in the second half. That's bad. They've been getting out to these big leads and just hanging on. Um, and two, if Travis Kelsey is taken out of the game, they can't win. He's a major part of their offense. But 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 here, can he be? The way be, because look, we saw this. I watched this this past weekend with the Browns, right? Every pass was five yards. Every pass was the quick pass. And they didn't threaten it in the, the ball. They didn't push the ball down the field at all. Right? Um, can you win if that's the style of football that you play? And it's starting to catch up with Kansas City. It will catch up with the Browns. Right? Maybe not in the AFC North. But it'll catch up to them. Um, and you've seen times, even with the Dolphins, where they run all those square ends, all those short routes. Everybody sits on all those routes. And it just seems like the offense is not going anywhere. Sure. You have to have that down the field threat. And the fact that Kansas City put themselves well, no, in. Huge, Leroy. Huh? You just can't catch them. just dropped the pass. But, but that, Kelsey so, fumbled the ball. So, but guess what? Let's be honest. But so so be it. Philadelphia so Eagles. Be it. Let me ask you a question. High today. If you're a quarterback and you see that same route and that same guy throw deep, are you going to have second thoughts about throwing it to him? Nope. You trust your guys. That's the one thing. Patrick okay, Mahomes but they got the most you. drops in the NFL. That's true. So, at some point, you're not going to drop all those passes in the playoffs. That's oh, oh, mm. that, See, now we're making assumptions. Okay, this is it. I'm not worried about the narrative of the Eagles being the best team in the NFL. I'm not worried about Kansas City being the team to beat. I'm worried about the narrative of the Miami Dolphins, how they only beat up on little wimpy bad teams and they can't beat a winning team. And now you look at the numbers and you know, Leroy, I'm a numbers guy. I believe in the numbers. I don't care what anybody says. Kansas City's record against teams they've lost to, 22 and 8. The Dolphins' record against teams they've lost to, 21 and 9. Right. Well, but but here's here's the other thing. It would be even worse if they wouldn't have lost to who did they lose to? Then they lose to Denver. They lost it. Well, Denver's not a bad team now. Hold up. That 70 to 20 win against a little wimp. No, Denver no, no. Team. I'm talking I'm talking about I'm talking about Kansas, Kansas City. Kansas the, the record Kansas. is the record. Right. And most of that. those losses when you say 22 and 8 come from that team. 
There you go. And Denver's not a bad team, by the way. Everybody's saying, not oh, now. Dolphins not now. up on them. Not now. Up on them. Against a little wimpy Denver team that actually is pretty Wait, good. Here's 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 what I hate about that stat right there. Okay. Because they tell you how difficult your record, your season is, or how difficult your your um you know games are before the season starts, which is dumb because yeah. it all changes, right? Okay, the Jets lose Aaron Rodgers, then that becomes a different team. Right, Denver struggles coming out the gate, so that becomes a different team. Chicago was supposed to take that next step, they look horrible. Right, the Chargers were supposed to be a contender, and they can barely stay around 500. All these things don't mean anything because you still got to go out and win these games. So, the fact that the Dolphins lost to um Kansas City, lost to Philly. And lost to Buffalo. Buffalo, which now that it looks like that was now now that you look at it now, it looks like a terrible loss, right? All on um, the road, by the way. That that doesn't that doesn't matter to me. The the what matters to me at this point is that the Dolphins are seven and three, mm-hmm. and whatever they want to accomplish, whatever they want to accomplish is in their own hands. And guess what? They get to do it against the Jets Friday night, Tim. Boyle is starting. And guess what? Even if he falters, hey. Trevor Simeon. And then right. if Trevor Simeon falters, Zach Wilson. Well, maybe the popcorn guy. Then Zach Wilson. Vlad, Vlad, string. Vlad let me ask you a question. You think <laughs> you think they, you think they start in Tim Boyle because he got the same initials as Tom Brady? Yeah. That's <laughs> That's how much Robert Salas doing. He's grabbing at straws. No, TV, no, no. man. TV. Put TV number, in. Give him number 12. He's doing it to save his ass. That's what he's doing. It. Well, he From the second say, well, overall pick to QB3. Woo! So, let me you ask know, you this. I mean, he's. it's not – you're acting like this is something new. It happened last season. What, what, why are you going – this right. is not a new story. This so happened let, me last ask, let me ask you this, bud. Mm-hmm. Is it – Robert Salah's fault? No. Or is no. it the guy it's, who decided to bring Zach Wilson a, in? It, no, it's uh, it's the whole organization Are, right now because you, you got to look at it this way. You knew that you were getting Aaron, but you should have gotten a backup. Every If you well, see right now. Uh, you got a second overall no, pick no, no, that no, no, you no. wasted. That right. should be your backup. Yeah, but you had two years and you already knew that look he at wasn't this. it. I'm not, blaming, I'm not blaming him. I'm not here. But Vlad, I'm never – gonna blame an organization right for having a jacked up backup quarterback right because if you get to that point you already in trouble this is with any team and so to say we should have had a better backup well think about this Vlad the better your backup the more money is gonna cost you the more money is gonna cost you the more it takes away from somebody else you may want to bring in but let me tell you this, okay? Well, if that was the case, then why did the Dolphins sign Mike White to that big to that big backup deal? Because they know that if some God forbid something happened to Tua, they would have different wouldn't situations. Want to have a free different, different situations, well, though. You no, gave Aaron Rodgers a bazillion dollars. And we didn't think he was going to be out in four plays. Actually, we did it. And then you had he took, he took the he took a salary dump. He took a right. salary. Dump. So, so you could sign so, other players. So you right. Still, so wait, maybe you, you still should have gotten a bet. You listen, still listen. paying fifty million dollars to your. You don't have to. You could have gotten Carson Wentz. You could have gotten somebody. No. What I'm saying is a backup. You could have gotten a decent backup quarterback. Well, That's what you had the second pick in the draft. That was two years ago. He stinks. We knew that from last but year. He's he's one one of, but he could still be a backup. And he, that dol- that Dolphins move. You telling me Carson Wentz? You think Carson Wentz is gonna be any good coming in? Pretty smart. He's gonna be. Listen, I will take Carson Wentz, a guy who's been in the league and the, in the oh. who's gotten his team to the playoff, and at least you know with the defense that Wait, you have, you that would you say move the ball. Okay, yeah, okay, I would you, just, okay. Glad, glad, you you said, glad, you said go, just go. But put it this way: Let's talk you're about gonna, this. I'm just gonna say this: the same way the Dolphins knew that. Look, they got his. They, they need Tua. They saw what happened last year when Tua got hurt, right? Five-game losing streak. They needed to get somebody just in case, a game or two or whatever. They were smart in doing that, signing Mike White. Yeah. You're not going to – you're not frantic 
if Mike White has to play a couple of games. When you realize four snaps into the season that Zach Wilson's your quarterback and they you've been told, hey, try to get somebody, try to get somebody, and you kept on saying, no, we're going to stay the course, we're going to stay the course, and now look how the course is. Yeah, but no, Glenn, it's an organization. Glenn, what you need to understand is money play. You can't have $60 million tied up in one position. Bam, you're not getting $60 million when Aaron took $35 million cut. What are we but doing wait, here? But Okay, Vlad, hear me out. What do you think they're paying Zach Wilson? He they not paying him anything. He's on a rookie deal. He was still the second pick in the draft. Though they paying him ten million plus. Okay, man. Let Just me tell you this: the Dolphins, by the way, oh. looking pretty, 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 pretty smart. Not only do you get Mike White, you do pay him a little bit, but you get a very solid backup quarterback. You also keep him out of the rival New York Jets' hands, to where they have to rely. On someone like Zach Wilson, Tim. I, what, what, what's his name again? Tim Boyle. Tim Boyle. He's just a he's a Brothers rookie. They, they, right, right. Well, you know what? Right That's now, the worst move in the world, right there, by the Miami Dolphins. You got to give him a little bit of credit, right there, because but, but it they're in. It's two minute. different. It's two different situations. Okay, and here's why. Okay, if I bring in a veteran quarterback in Aaron Rodgers, regardless of what we pay in him, right? You already have a guy who started for you, and you're hoping that you can develop him. You're not going to give up on him. You're not going to if, – if what Vlad is talking about, if they should have did that, then they should have just cut Zach Wilson. They should have just cut him. Well, they, they, they would they, try to. You, listen, you, this, is how, this is how you look at it, Leroy. That's your man. You picked him, right? Right. You, you, stick, you keep on sticking with him, you're going to die with him. Right. Your ass is on right now. His Salah's ass is on the grill right now. He's right. on the torch for him right now. If he's the one that decided to draft him. Both him and Joe Douglas. Correct. Their ass is on the jaw. Right. You decided to do that. That's the same way. It would have been the same way if if you guys drafted somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Thank God. If Mike McDaniel didn't love Tua the way he did. If uh -huh. Mike, that would have, you know what I mean? That you would have been, you would have been stuck with that. They made a decision. They got to live with it right now. I'll but, tell you this. Right. Tim That's Boyle, all. Trevor Simeon, Zach Wilson, they don't scare me one bit. What does scare me is Jay Fig. She's about to get on us about taking a break. So let's get to some headlines real quick. They're brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Supercenter. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. The Heat are 9-1 and one in their last 10 games, defeating yes, the Bulls 19-100 last night. Dunn can Robinson continued his hot play, 22 points, while Jame Jaquez Jr. scored 19. Miami, they take on Cleveland tomorrow at 7.30. Heat looking pretty good. They are, and, and, and there's a couple of guys that were never even thought of during all these trade talks. And that's Duncan Robinson and Jaime Hawkins. They would have been gone if somebody on this show would have had their say. Um, Dude, by the way, last week, I'm sorry. Last week, we got to get into this. Somebody all of a sudden put on glitter gloves, some penny loafy black shoes, and started moonwalking on his, 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 his oh, I never wanted to trade Tyler. I never wanted to get rid of Tyler. And I never wanted Dane. What's yeah. wrong with your man? No, he didn't say that. Here, here, let me fix it. Because he said, uh, we may have dodged the bullet, which is his other line. Right. Okay, yeah, we right. may have dodged the bullet. He, and, and right. He, and then know, Dane the next, when that, Dane went to yeah. Milwaukee, he came on the show crying. I really wanted him. Yeah. But you know what? I, I always, in all these situations, in your situation, in this situation with the Heat, I do think at some point they're going to add somebody. I, I really do. I might subtract some um, soon. But here's what happened. The players on this team have made it tough mm -hmm. for the Heat to do anything. Or have they made it easy? Easy. They made, made it easy. Easy. more valuable. Right. Because that's whatever that you want to look at. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> hey, 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 however, it however you want, however you want to look at it, you're going to be hard pressed to tell me that there's somebody that could come in and help you more than Duncan Robinson is playing right now. Right. But you if he keeps on playing well, you're not mm. looking at that contract and you're not saying, oh no, that's a you, you spent too much. He keeps right. on playing well, but you have a chance of adding someone it depends a on a little bit better. 
Like all right, right now, Zach Levine. You put Zach Levine on this on this Heat team. You think he's better than what Duncan's doing right now? No, no, not Duncan. That's not what he's saying. I'm just saying. No, I say you <laughs> add him on the team. You got to get rid of somebody. Oh, <laughs> oh, we're not gonna we're gonna say that for a little later. We know who might get rid of for Zach Levine. <laughs> Come on, oh, you, oh, you, oh, wait, wait, no. you at home right now or at work? Pause for a second. What name pops in your mind that maybe you could make a trade with Zach Levine? Okay, that's enough. Connor McDavid scored two goals, but the Panthers' yeah. Nico Mikola matched that as the Cats got a win over the Oilers 5-3. to three. Next up, the Bruins. They're coming to town, and they are going to get it from us tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. You better believe the Bruins are going to get it from the fans. It's, uh, it, it's, it's pretty cool that you got the Panthers and the, and heat, the right? heat. Well, both won 9 to 10. There's a lot of winning going on down here right now. Well, one team that's not and winning the Dolphins. And the Hurricanes. Yeah. Their defensive coordinator, though, Lance Gidry, being rumored to possibly in the offseason go to USC or LSU. He's maintaining that he's the coach here in Miami. They're getting ready for Boston College Friday at noon. At noon, a Friday. We got a lot of action this Friday. Everybody, all te- all four playing. teams are playing. Everybody's playing, right? All four. 12. I mean, it's Kane's noon. Kane. Two o'clock is the Dolphins. Three o'clock. Dolphins oh, versus two. the Jets. Watch out is for Tim Boyle. Three. three? Three. Tim Boyle. Tim Boyle will be quarterback. Zach Wilson will be third, fourth string quarterback behind a lucky fan in seat number two forty seven or row six. The Heat play. The Heat play. The Panthers, the Panthers play at eight o'clock. Yep. Woo! Gonna be a Black Friday. Up next, though, I don't want to talk about the Dolphins' offense. I want to talk about their defense and can they maintain what they did against the Raiders? Was it an aberration or is it here to stay? Leroy, Vlad, Jay Fig. And myself, Dan Day, filling in for Tobin, will let you know there's a dog running into the studio right now here on 560 WQAM.
We talked about Black Friday being a good Friday, especially for sports. Well, get a load of this. We got somewhere for you to go. Join Marcos. He's on vacation today. Jay Fig, she's here. And WQAM at Quarterdeck on University Drive in Davie this Friday for a Miami sports watch party from 2 to 5 p.m. As all four of our local teams are playing, enjoy ice cold beer specials. Whew, I love everything about that ice cold beer and specials. And you can enter for your chance to win a golf foursome. I'm not going to say anything about that. And lunch for four at Woodmont Country Club in Tamarack this Friday. Marco Woodmont. And Wood, uh, Woodman at Quarterdeck in Davie. That's that South coming out of you. Mm-hmm. Sounds like a good time to me. Quarterdeck. I might come out there. Hell yeah. Quarterdeck, man. That's the place to be. Friday with everything that you can imagine sports-wise on the TV, especially that Dolphins-Jets game starting at 3 o'clock. Got to admit that Dolphins D looked pretty, 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 pretty good this past weekend against the Raiders. Now, Leroy, was it simply the Raiders? Not that very good offensively. Look at the total yards. 296 yards total. Passing yards, 260. Rushing yards with Josh Jacobs, only 36 rushing yards. Has the D under Vic Fangio kind of come into its own? Is it that the Raiders aren't that good? Is it a little bit of both? The main thing is, though, against Tim Boyle, maybe the water boy, and Zach Wilson, is there a chance that this defense continues it this Friday, what they started, at least against the Raiders, and of course, Jalen Ramsey being an alien. Um, the most important thing of all the stuff you talk about and you left out is health. It seems like Vic Fangio was trying to keep the fort and keep everybody together until everybody was healthy. So the things that they were able to do, you know, you can take your two corners and lock down two receivers and have everybody else run around like crazy, right? When those two guys aren't in, and you got Cater Kohu or Eli Apple playing corner. I thought Cater Kohu played well, though. No, but but again, he's on that other guy, mm -hmm. right? But you have your two studs on their stud. So there's a big difference. And so now that everybody's healthy, you can kind of open up your bag a little bit because you got that support in the secondary. And if you notice, the guys up front are making more plays. So it's working hand in hand. But I think the most important part is that now Vic Fangio is comfortable with who's in there and everybody's healthy. So that's the biggest thing with that defense is that they've been hanging on. You know, they've been trying to do things to get to the quarterback quicker, knowing they didn't have that coverage in the back and now they can change it up and, and, and throw a lot of different things at you because they got those two dogs on the outside. And then we ain't even talking about Javon Holland in the middle. Yeah. So, yeah. So with that secondary healthy, it allows you to do more things up front. When you can do more things up front and put pressure on the quarterback. Now you're starting to see the turnovers. You're starting to see the, you know, all that stuff going on in the secondary that couldn't happen before. So, that's the biggest change defensively for me is just health. So is it something that we can expect this defense to not only continue to do good against Tim Boyle, and I'll keep saying Tim Boyle because Tim Boyle, and the New York Jets, is that something that we can expect this week and also maybe going forward? Or is it something that, you know, Las Vegas Raiders were okay? Is the health and uh, – maybe the coming together of Vic Fangio's defense, a little more experience. Is that something that can be sustainable, Leroy, throughout yes. the season? Because I thought about this. This is kind of a demarcation in the season. What you did previously is good, but these are the games. Remember the Kelsey brothers saying, you know, the Dolphins have to show me they can win the ones that are the most important, the end of the season. We're now at the end of the season. These are the ones, if you win these games, nobody cares about the stupid narrative about only beating up on sad teams and getting against winning teams. This is the defense that you're saying can be sustainable in the yeah. whatever cutting time of the season and the playoffs. Yeah, as long as they're healthy. But 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 here's the deal. You play the first portion of the season to get to the second portion, mm -hmm. right? There's going to be a lot of people who think that there are teams that can win the big game that don't make the playoffs, right? There's no guarantee Buffalo's going to make the playoffs. 
So then what are we going to say about the great Josh Allen and that Buffalo team? Did we think that Buffalo could win the big game? Huh? Did we ever think that Buffalo could have won the big game or could win the Super Bowl? No, I think I, I don't think – maybe not Super Bowl, but I'm saying a big game against the upper echelon teams. We've always what? taken Buffalo and put them there. So What's the knock on Josh Allen? He throws it to the other team too much. And that when, when the spotlights are on, he fades away. Okay. I mean, they, they have won back-to-back divisions. All you, listen, what have they done in the three, in the game? all you can do is this, Dan. Right? And this for everybody. Get there. If you get there, anything can happen. Mm-hmm. All right. Hell, we seen two what? An eight and eight and nine and seven Jets team go to the AFC championship two years in a row. Hey, you'll probably see a seven and nine Saints team win a playoff game this year. But that's um, my we see seven and nine teams every time right. they make them in the playoffs. But, but, but that's my point. If you get there, anything can happen. I don't want to hear during the season, oh, but when they get there, they can't do it. Says who? Says who? The, the favorite don't always win the Super Bowl. No. So if you get there, you got a chance. But if you don't get there, there's no chance of winning the Super Bowl. You can't win the Super Bowl if you watch in the first week of playoffs. You can't. No, so you can't. get there, and then let's talk and see whether they can win the big game or not. But for people that say, oh, no, now you already worried about stuff that haven't happened yet. You already worried about the big game that you ain't played yet. So I don't want to hear that. Get there, and then we'll talk, Okay. All these people with all these fans, all these teams that say, oh, but the Dolphins haven't beat a team with a winning record. Okay? You get to the playoffs. Doesn't matter. It don't matter. So get there, and then we'll discuss it. That's how this works. You saw the Dolphins won this past weekend against the Raiders. It was more of a defensive battle. Do you think the Dolphins have the personnel to kind of play to whatever the game dictates? Maybe this week. I mean, I don't think it'll be an offensive shootout, but if they do get an offensive shootout, you know they got the personnel to do that. Now it looks like the defense, if they get into a defensive battle, can make big plays and do things. Do you think the Dolphins have now become that team, now that they're more healthy, that they're one of those teams that no matter what the game dictates, they can play to that? Here's the only thing that I have a question with the Dolphins. And it's not about personnel. It's not about talent. Every game that they've struggled in, right? Every game that they've struggled in, all of the teams have squeezed everybody in the middle of the field and dared you to throw those in routes. All right? They've just sat almost all 11 guys in the middle of the field and dared you to to beat them that way. And to a struggle. Okay? When you run the ball, They will jump everybody outside and not allow you to do those sweeps and stuff like that. What are your adjustments going to be when that presents itself? Or are you going to struggle for a whole half before you make changes? That's the thing that I'm worried about is that if you get in those situations again and get down to the wrong team, you didn't make a move quick enough to be able to stay in the game. Because it's happened, look, when they played um, Buffalo, all Buffalo did was sink everybody in the middle of the field, dare two of the throw there. He patted the ball, patted the ball, because nothing was there, gets sacked, right? Um, This past week, right, the the problem they had was that team's got some pretty good team speed. You run these sweeps, they're running right into, they they quick enough to get out there. What are your adjustments? So I want to see if they have a game plan or some tweaks to their game plan to combat those things. And and if you see that, then I'm pretty sure that now you have an offense that can kind of correct or change or, or, you know, or move through a game. But look, I don't care how good you are. The Super Bowl champ has one trait. They have won a, a number of different ways during the course of the season. I don't care how good you are. Sometimes you're going to play a 13-10 stinker, mm-hmm. right? As long as you get out there with a win. The most important thing is winning. Don't, don't misunderstand. The most important thing is winning. You don't have to win every game 40 to 25. You don't have to win every game 24 nothing. You just have to win. This ain't the BCS. You don't get style There's points. There's no style points. There's no proof. At the way. end, they add up the big. They don't say – Oh, but you can't go to playoffs because you didn't beat a team with a winning record. So who cares? Just keep piling up wins. 
that's one of those things I wanted to point out and I'll kind of make it a little closer to home for you, Leroy. The Browns in a not very pretty game against oh. the Steelers, 13 to 10. Of course, we beat the Raiders 20 to 13. Who cares? Nobody Just win. cares because right. guess what? You go into the playoffs and you make some noise. No one's looking back saying, oh, my God, look, you barely beat the Steelers who couldn't throw a forward pass. And then a year from now, you look back on the score and you say, oh, yeah, we beat them. You don't look back and say, well, it was an ugly win and probably we shouldn't have won or we got outplayed. Nobody says that. In the pros, it's all about winning, and there's no cheap wins no matter how you win. Even if it's a last-second Hail Mary, touches 15 different people's hands, you catch it, you score a touchdown, it's not cheap in the NFL. You earn every single win. And once it's passed, it's done with. Nobody cares anymore. I don't care who you are. You hear all these coaches say, Man, winning a game is hard. Because, Look at how much I sell Because here's why. Because here's why. And this is the honest truth. You have a game plan. You think you could be better than that other team. And then things happen during the game. You go, whoa, this dude is better than we saw on film. Or yeah. this guy, they pros too. You know what? They got the $30 million guy too. Right? They're like, like it ain't, everybody's spending the same amount of money. So they got big time, they paying big time money too. And so you got, they got players, they got guys. Like we just talk about this week. Okay. You think Gary Wilson can't make some plays? You think he Brees better. Hall, you think Brees Hall can't run the rock? He better. Right. You think that defense, that. you think that defense, defense can't get good. on a run where they just not allowing you to get nothing? Like, yeah, they have the ability to do it. They haven't done it as much as they would like. But if you go in there making assumptions, you're going to get bust over the head. I want to say that's this. what happens, right? What the big guy going face the little guy and, and, the, and the big guy just think he's going to go over there and just, and oh, but that little guy, MMA guy, and he fold him up like a pretzel. Like, yeah, you can't, no. So, so I don't ever discredit or try to take a negative away from winning. Would you have liked the game to go differently? Sure. Mm-hmm. I like the would win. You have liked, would you have liked to have been better in better situations? Well, guess what? During the week when you watch film, you keep trying to get better at that. But guess what? The most important thing is win the damn game. I don't care if the Jets game end up being 9-6. to six. What about 2 nothing? So what? You know, you, wait, you know, you know, you know, it. you know, it. Can I get a call to the bullpen? Yeah. Hey, you know, you know what uh, Mike McDaniel is going to come out and say? He goes, well, uh, well, no, no, uh, well, no. well he goes, say, he gonna say well, well, that was a stinker, right? <laughs> like, it happens, dude. Like, you know, the worst feeling in the world is having a great game plan and going out there and nothing works. It happens. That's what I want to get to, Leroy, after the break. Mike McDaniel and all the coaches in the NFL, they can scheme, they can put together game plans, but there's some things you just can't scheme for and coach for. Do the Dolphins have a certain kryptonite and have other teams in the past figured it out and maybe teams in the future figure it out? We're going to talk about that next on the Tobin and Leroy Show, 560 WQAM.
Yeah, yeah. Shonda Paul. It is that special time of the year. It is Riptide time. I'm talking musical Riptide. Our world famous concert returns to Fort Lauderdale Beach December 2nd and 3rd. And our Black Friday special is underway. Use the code Black Friday. And you can get $40 off two day tickets and $20 off single day tickets, excluding Sunday general admission tickets. The full lineup has been announced. The Black Keys, of course, you know, tighten up. Oh, you need jelly rolls. Somebody save me. I'm trying to go through and let you know I know all these bands and love all these bands. Bleachers, I just want to get better. Young the Giant, it's my cough syrup. My body tells me dirty heads. Hey, 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 I'm on vacation every single day. Sublime hey. with Rome, lay me down. Silver Sun pickups, panic switch. Nonetheless, go to RiptideMusicFestival.com. Use the code Black Friday and get a discount on tickets. Riptide Music Festival is powered by Ford and sponsored by Spirit. Travel more with Spirit and the free Spirit MasterCard. Hmm. hmm. Nice. I'm into these bands, man. I'm excited. Riptide, great times on the beach. I do want to talk about this, Leroy. Do the Dolphins have a certain kryptonite? We know definitely the Philadelphia Eagles and the Buffalo Bills said, let's get physical, and the Dolphins did not get so physical. Kansas City did the best they can. Is that one of the things that maybe you can't game plan for? Is a team just going out there being bigger, stronger, and nastier than you are? Here's the deal. You could game plan, right? You can have an excellent offensive, defensive game plan. Everybody can be on point with what to do. You still got to defend that guy across from you. Mm -hmm. and, and so what you're saying is, is that, you know, a lot of people think that this is the type of team that you can ram it down their throat, be physical with them, push them around, and they're not going to respond. That is not entirely true. But what you have to do is understand when you're in one of those games and you have to return the pressure, right? It looks weird when you're trying to run fly sweeps and they run it straight down your throat. Right, It just looks like a two different styles of play. But if you run the ball as well as they do, somebody is punching somebody in the mouth up front. Right, You can't just all, everybody just run away from them. Somebody putting, the, the, the offensive and defensive lines have been playing really well. When you get after the quarterback, somebody has to beat somebody in front. That's aggression. But what you can't have and what teams try to do is we're going to methodically move the ball down the field we're going to try to keep you off the field. Mm -hmm. We're going to make this game as ugly as possible, right? And we're going to try to just get us to the fourth quarter, right? And, and try not to make any mistakes. That's a hard game to play, but sometimes that's all you can play. Yeah, you look at look at what just happened to Pittsburgh, right? What Najee Harris say? Well, I, we can't We can't keep doing this. And they fired their off OC down. They but, fired but, but, he's, but, but wait, it's not a secret. Matt Canada sucks. No, not it's not a secret that you can't keep playing football that yeah. way for 18 damn weeks. You can't do it. That you know, there's a difference in having weapons and choosing to play that way, which which is what Pittsburgh was doing, right? Or Trying to play that way because you have to. That's what the Jets are. Right? Offensively, you got to keep it close. You can't make no mistakes. Because you can't play catch up. You don't have that type of offense right now. And so, from that standpoint, if you have the weapons to go down the field, if you have the ability to run the football, if you have the ability to have a creative offense and put some pressure on the defense, yet you choose to play a certain way, you like you asking for trouble. You're asking for a quarterback like DTR to have three big plays in the fourth quarter and you lose a game. So, yeah, um, if teams want to play that way, that's fine. But if somebody gets loose, now what? Now you got to put pressure on them to kind of keep it close, and now it's a blowout. So, yeah, teams are going to try to do that. Teams are going to try to run the ball on the defense. Teams are going to try to keep it close. They're going to try to get after Tua. They're going to rush him up the middle, right? 
and try to take away some of his line of sight. They're going to squeeze the middle of the field and dare him to throw somewhere else. And these are the things you have to do until you see it don't work. But so if that- it doesn't, if it doesn't, now you got to track meet on offense. And in defense, you're third and eight and third and nine on every drive. So is that the Jets game plan to take the air out of the ball and to kind of keep the ball out of the Dolphins hands when it comes to the offense? Right now they're trying to play a game that's thin as crepes. Yeah. Right. It's, <laughs> a, just, it's a house of cards, isn't it? Yeah. It's if one it, card it, falls. The Jets are a whole lot of trouble. I'm going to tell you, I can tell you right now, Vlad watches every game and the game will be close, but he's so frustrated at the style of football that he's watching, he got to go do something else. It's too frustrating. I know that. I know what it feels like. I've been on teams that played like that. And then at the end of the year, the coach say, we win within one score every fourth quarter. Right? That's what the coaches say. But I know what that's like. I played on teams like that. And part yeah. of it is we didn't have the talent. Well, you're not balanced on right. both sides. Like right now you see that. You're looking at the Dolphins team right now. You see that since Ramsey's came back, you see that the defense is playing so much better now, and you know how explosive the offense is. If Jason Sanders could get his uh, leg together, then you know you would be like, okay, we're we're solid in all three areas. But you see, they're a balanced team, so you're not worried if, like you said earlier, if they're down ten or ten, down fourteen, because you know the offense can come back immediately and and make that make that up. And you're not afraid, and you're not afraid if you're in a tight, you know, hard hitting physical defensive battle because you know the defense can hold its weight. When you're a team like the Steelers, like my Jets, like you're the Browns, you the Browns, the Browns, the Browns. You're playing. You're relying so much on your defense mm-hmm. to be great every week. And guess what? They're not great on every series. And you're you not, cannot you know get I mean? down by double You're not going to be great in every series, but. And nobody's the Baltimore Ravens of 2000 anymore. So right. you're putting so much pressure that you're afraid one mistake. You're happy with a field goal. You're playing field position game. You're not happy with a field position. Like, okay, we held Turn them. over, kills yeah. it, anything. You know, the special teams, that's not what you want to live as a fan. Your margin for error is very thin if you're oh, a team like that. Man. What is the magic number for the Dolphins? I say if they score 21, it's lights out. They've got the win against the Jets. They score 21 points. You're winning this game easy. That's easy. the way I feel. It, look, I, and, I think and if you get wait, a little magic. And, and wait, here, check this out. And if you get to 21 quick, it's gonna be 35 oh. because oh. now they got to put some. Now they got to put a little pressure on that quarterback to make some plays. So Ooh. that's that's kind of you know. I said this against Kansas City, and there's certain situations I'm not deferring, right? So when that kid, when 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 the coin is tossed, I'm not giving the ball to Patrick Mahomes first, right? And guess what happened? Dolphins got down seven nothing. Right? Yeah. This week, I don't care how bad that Jets team is. I want to put even more pressure on that offense by going down and scoring. Let's you see. go down and score, and then put that young quarterback <laughs> in a situation no. where wow, this could be a track meet. I got to make some plays. Oh. Boyle's not young. Wait, wait a second. Let, let's let's break down. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, how play. old you are don't determine how mature you are. He's 29. a young quarterback in this league. <laughs> 29. I want to go through this. Wait, how many games yeah. have you started? How many games has he how started? How many games has he started? Okay, that's what I'm Pardon? going by. Let's go through the stats real quick of this uh, young – quarterback maybe we could put a little pressure on him he's six foot nothing 200 and nothing pounds he runs a four seven uh 40 four, seven, nothing he's from middleton connecticut his college uconn from 2013 to 2015 then he decided to cr- find greener pastures at eastern kentucky 2016 2017 2018 goes undrafted since he's been in the league he has played for the green bay packers the detroit lions the chicago bears and the new york jets well, if, He's he was a going against a, if he was going against the NFC North team, I'd be like, all right. You need but- some more? Three touchdowns to nine interceptions. He's completed 73 passes out of 120 passes in his career. So you know what that is, Vlad? You know what that sounds like? That sounds check like down Charlie. Version, that sounds like an older version of uh, Zach Wilson. Check, check down Charlie. He decided in 2016, or was decided for him just to not – oh, no, no, that was at Eastern Kentucky. I'm sorry. That's not his pro career. 
Um, he has started actually three games for the Detroit Tigers back in 2021. Lions? Detroit Tigers. Nah, he was a baseball player for a while. Yes, he was 0-3 in his three starts for the Lions. There was a lot of people that were 0-3 for the Detroit Lions. <laughs> like, let's not – the Detroit Lions, you see right now, they haven't been the Detroit Lions of that for a long time. In fact, the last time they were good, I was playing football. Three touchdowns to nine interceptions. That 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 uh that starting period uh, of all three losses with the Detroit Lions, he threw three three touchdowns, six interceptions. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Here's what I would say. How, how do you game plan for Tim Boyle? <laughs> how you game plan for him? Pressure. Easy. Pressure. 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 You know what Nathaniel Hackett's already gonna do. It's not like what he's gonna open up the playbook for him. Why? Maybe because Boyle's been in that offense a little bit longer than than Zach Wilson. I like think they're he... gonna make a concerted effort to run Bryce Hall because if you watch all of the games of the Dolphins, the teams that have had success have been able to run the ball right down their the Dolphins' throat. Yeah, but Lee, there's a. There's another caveat to that. Uh oh. The teams that have been able to run the ball on the Dolphins have also had a legitimate offensive line. You have a Jets team that's going Ooh. through so many changes in the offensive line, which was already a problem when going into the season and everybody was talking about it. We, <coughs> said, we thought they were going to be able yeah. to, you know, to fortify it. To fix it with Aaron Rodgers. With Rodgers, but with guys coming back and those guys got hurt. And now I don't know the, the yeah. status of Makai Becton going into Friday's game, but you can't run the ball if you're changing the offensive line. Here's what happened. Here's the other think thing, Vlad. Here's the other thing. When Aaron Rodgers is playing and they know how quick he gets rid of the ball, mm -hmm. the coverages might be a little looser, okay? When Zach Wilson or Tim Boyle playing quarterback, <laughs> they got eight, nine-man boxes and daring you to throw the ball. So that ain't doing that offensive line no favors either. All I can say, Tim Boyle, Trevor Simeon, the guy who sells beer at the Meadowlands, and Zach Wilson, we're coming for you. Up next, going to get you caught up to date with everything that's happening in the sports world here on the Tobin and Leroy Show, 560 WQAM. Text W.
It's time for our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tongue of Iloa. Not Tua Tag of Iloa. A for effort. Dolphins quarterback. Tua. It's our Tua. It's our Tua. Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Can go to hell. To a tongue of Iloa. Dolphins quarterback. Daddy loves you guys. Our Tua with Tobin and Leroy. Check the history of food. <laughs> Hour two of the program, not Tim Boyle. Hour of the program, two a tongue below. I will say this: you keep on crapping on Tim Boyle. He's gonna throw for three hundred. I know. Yards. I got to start being careful, but every time you warn me about stuff like this, I get in trouble. Like LSU's gonna kill Florida State. Okay, I'm going to scale it back a little bit. Congratulations, Tim Boyle, on getting the starting job. Uh, good luck against the Dolphins. Not really. Nonetheless, it's hour two of the program, and I'm gonna say this, Leroy. The Dolphins' offense, although it only scored 20 points, I thought outside of the and a little bit of the oopsies, offense was pretty good this past Sunday against the Raiders. They had a they had a lot of yards with no results. And exactly. To a tough if, if you're gonna beat the upper echelon teams, you can't have that. You right. you you have your you have to have about one or two more touchdowns instead of field goals. In those situations, because you were real close. For a pedestrian day, Tua, 28 for 39, accurate, 325 yards, two touchdowns, and one bad interception. Break down this interception for me, if you do know. Did he just simply overthrow Jalen Waddle in that first play of the second half? Or was Jalen Waddle maybe in a position or spot that he didn't think he was going to be in? Because you don't usually see Jalen Waddle be that wide open and get that overthrown by Tua Here, Tungapaloa. Here's what happens. Tua throws the ball with great anticipation, mm -hmm. right? It's going to come a time, and this happens with Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes, um, where even though you have a certain route, you see all that open field, mm -hmm. and the quarterback can just throw it anywhere to that open field, and you go and catch it to where – as fans watching the game, we don't know that that wasn't the route. But those two know, hey, and this usually happens. So when you have a corner route, right, you see this this way. Say if you have a corner route, a deep corner, and somebody runs a flat and the safety sits, right? I mean, the corner sits on the short route. That means you got 30 yards over there to run. You don't have to throw it to the corner. You can throw it to where it almost looks like an out route because you got 30 yards of field and a wide receiver will adjust. Those are the things that, you know, look terrible when they don't work out but look great when they do. And I think it was one of those things where, you know, Waddle was like, why would I run in there with the safety and we got 30 yards of wide open field? Just lay it out there anywhere. And so they were on a different page as far as that's concerned. But it was the right idea. He was wide open. You can't. Here's the deal. You cannot. If y'all haven't reviewed or discussed or talked about or on the same page with that, you can't make any assumptions. So the route should have been run unless they had a previous conversation. Okay. So I get what everybody was doing. It was one of those things where. Yeah, Waddle was reading the play right. Maybe not running the right route. And Tua, because he throws it so soon, right? He's throwing, he he can't assume that Waddle's gonna see what he sees. So they gotta have that conversation. Hey, I'm gonna throw it in the open area. You gotta adjust and go get it. They've done a great job of that. Beside the oopsies, though, I thought the offense was good. Tua on that play, he gets the first down, fumble. Okay, that happens right there. The Tyree Kill touchdown was awesome. You saw the Raiders' Marcus Epps just basically, he could have tackled Tua and just said, you know what? Nah, man, I'm not doing that. He could have tackled him from behind. He just went, mm, nah, I ain't worried about that. 
Then, of course, you go drive all the way down the field. And then I thought they should have kicked the field goal. I was saying, trying to tell people in the press box, why are we kicking the field goal? Why are we going for it? Nonetheless, we try to go for it. That's where the Tyree kill, James's finger, turnover on downs. You got to do what you. You got to do you, right? You got to do you. If that's who you are, then that's who you are. It's like we know if Philadelphia get four, fourth and one, mm-hmm. I don't care if it's, the, if, the, if it's on their own 15. You got to be who you are. So when I think it was a cup, was it a couple of years? No, last year, remember it was fourth and six, and they ran across around to Waddle, and Waddle scored a touchdown. Did anybody say nothing in? Right? You got to be who you are. And and think about this. If you are 70% or 50, 50 to 60%, on those fourth and three, fourth and fours, right? How many more points does that add up to? Yeah. That's the thing you you have to and and there's brains much more smart than I am that have probably figured that out. Right. But well, in, in the long run, are you better off going for it? Absolutely. Absolutely. But I'm just trying to make a point that the offense was still effective and good. They just didn't get that end result. Another time you come down and of course, Jason Sanders misses the 51 yard field goal. You get the Savan Ahmed touchdown. Nice little play on the inside seam. And then of course you get the two more Jason Sanders field goals. And then in the end of the game, I mean, there was a whole lot of attrition going on, but I thought the offense moved. They just didn't give you that touchdown result that you are expecting from the Dolphins very often. And that's what happens where your play gets lost because we only look at the score, right? Mm-hmm. You and, and they'll go in this week and say, hey, we got to correct our red zone offense. Other than that, we move the ball. Now, there's teams that play for that right there. They'll let you move the ball up and down the field. But once you get in that red zone, they shut you down, then they, go, they shut you down, make you kick field goals. The problem is all the teams that do it can't score. Yeah, <laughs> if you're a touchdown scoring team, you let the other team score field goals and you score touchdowns, and that's right. a pretty good strategy. Exactly, like teams that can't score that are the ones that you know Ben don't trying break. to keep it close, trying to keep it close. <laughs> it's true though, you know, you score three field goals, you're up nine nothing, you get lucky, score a touchdown, it's nine seven all of a sudden, you know. Right, hey, exactly. Still alive. <laughs> Let's get to the headlines real quick from the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car star? Palmetto Ford. We know. Duncan Robinson had 22. Bam had 23. Hami Hakez Jr. had 19. As the Heat took down the Bulls in Chicago, 118-110. Next up, it's Cleveland tomorrow, 730, up in Believeland. Does anybody in Cleveland care that much about the Cavs, Leroy? You know Cleveland better than I do. Yeah, they do. I mean, they did when they got Spider. Mm-hmm. That, I mean, that's a great player right there. They got a lot of young players, though. Mm-hmm. They you made know, the playoffs so- last year, lost to the Knicks. Thanks so so there's hope, right? But when you look at – I think everybody in the East is looking at Boston, Philly. Yeah, Boston, all that. I mean, and Boston's I, got a good record. And but I'm just saying, Charlotte. Boston, the guy Jason Philly, for 40-something points. They're looking, I'm just talking about the moves, Vlad. I'm not talking about the team. Uh, when you look at what Boston did, when you look at what Milwaukee did, mm-hmm. right, and then you're looking at your team, there's a lot of fan bases that, that are like, well, why didn't we, you know, do something? So, in the East right now, I mean, I think most people and y'all were, still got John Randall. Y'all been trying to get rid of John, John Randall, Randall for three years. We had the nose tackle, but I think we have Julius Randall. Julius Randall. <laughs> Julius <laughs> Randall. I do it every time. He's I think in the East, this, this is right now what the <laughs> pundits would put the East as Celtics number one, Bucks number two. Heat number three, the third best team in the East. I don't care about the 76. You think the pundits, I, I you give think the pundits or, or, or Heat fans? I think if, if you had to put a gun because, to their head because let me, and they had let to me bet ask their you wallet and they had to bet their wallet, not their takes and not their – You think know, you think they picked the Heat over Joel Embiid and Terrence Maxey? Yes, indeed. If you put their okay. wallet on it. Okay. If you put their wallet on it. I, I, that's where you have to put it at. Not what, oh, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to go on the TV and say this, this, and this, and I have a Heat uh, You know what? Prejudice. I got to agree with Dan. I think on TV they would say Put one your thing, money where your mouth but is. But I think if they had, like, you told them to put their money. I think okay. they put no money on Philly. Okay, you can't okay. Philly. that's a Heat fan. You heat can, Nation, but stand would up. Would you really want to go against – Heat Nation. Betting against – Eric Spolstra, Pat Riley. Mm-hmm. No, he, no Heat Nation, stand up. 
Are you scared of a series with the Philadelphia 76ers? No, Are you saying bring no. it on, Here, baby? Here's the, here's the deal. Here's bring the it deal. on, baby. Uh, he the he have point. proven that you don't need to be afraid of anyone. Okay, I'm a little That's more not what I'm saying. The Bucks. <laughs> you you worry about the Celtics more than the Bucks? No, 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 no. I'm more worried about the Bucs and the Celtics. Right. I'm more worried about the Celtics and the Bucs than I am the 76ers. 76ers, let's go. Five games, seven game, 10 game series, 15 game series. I don't care. Let's go. I got Celtics, Bucks. Okay. Time out. Time out. Let's get our game plan together. Let's make sure that we get this right. Bucks, especially because, I mean, you got scoring at will inside and out, and you got size, and you got defense. And you got like, but that's what's, uh, what's uh, White's first name? Jay, it was, uh, which one? For the Celtics. Derek? Derek White. He he looks like I a different dude with no hair. I liked him with the hair. I like how you were about to say Jaden. I think you were going for tangible names. You were going for tan you were going for tangible names, right? Tangible like names. Brandon, Jaden. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's not like, digress too much. Connor McDavid gets two goals, but who needs Connor McDavid when you got Nico Mikola? For the Panthers, he matched those two goals as the Cats win over the Oilers 5-3. to Oilers having a rough season, by the way. Next up, the Bruins come to town tomorrow at 7. Hey, this year, Panthers have been pretty good. I'm not going to lie. What are they, 10-5? 11-5? Uh, Let's see what they got right How now. How do you like the fact that the two teams that went to the finals that, you know, are starting off there the following season very well? 12-5-1, the Panthers, by the way. It's you know what is because it seems like the two styles of play. You know what I mean? When you have to understand that it didn't. It took three quarters of a year mm -hmm. for them to to finally start playing the type of hockey that their coach wanted them to play. But now, and now it's like a continuation. So mm -hmm. they've they've kind of grown into this. Whereas Vegas been doing it for like three years. So but, it's just like Tuesday to them to get up and play the way they play. It's funny to me now because, like, when they started off the season, it was kind of slow and everybody was worried, both he and Panthers. We're kind of worried it's going to be a repeat of yeah. last year. And then all of a sudden they go on the winning streaks and then everybody's – their chest is out. We're everybody's cool. peacocking We're cool. now all of a sudden. Like, yeah, 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 that's great. Well, we, we also had to hand out – and I, when I say we, uh, my name's on the show, but we mean he – had to hand out a, a, an apology – to the head coach also because you know he was saying well, i'm getting this team ready for playoff hockey mm. and they barely made it into the playoffs mm. and you know we had one brendan tobin who was kind of hot and then they kind of got it going and you know i think we we all lack one thing one trait as fans and i include myself because sometimes I get caught up in it. I know what it is. Patience. Ah, speaking of patience, Miami Hurricanes. That's what we keep talking about. We did the post game against the Louisville Cardinals. They barely lost. We said you got to have patience because Mario Cristobal's building something. He's getting this team right. He's getting his recruits in. All you have to do is have patience. And then, of course, everybody says, well, look at the guy at Louisville. It's his second year. Look what Deion Sanders, although Deion Sanders is not the best example anymore. Nonetheless, other guys are doing more in less time. You got to have patience as a fan. That's hard to sell a fan base. But then I ask you this, your favorite all-time team, are you ride or die no matter what? Yes. So why not have a little bit of patience? I think I think the 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 here's what people don't seem to understand. Your situation is not their situation. Right? Mm. If you can go to one thing that Louisville has had all year. Because the style of football they play is not the style of football you thought you were going to be a top 10 team. Let me let me put that out there. Because they grind it, they they run the ball, they play sound defense, and they just wear you down, right? Um, but the one consistent thing that they've had all year is their quarterback. Mm. So if you start there, now, I know people don't want to hear this. Go ahead. And I know people hate to say this. Sometimes your team is just not good enough. One of the reasons why, you know why DBs grab? Yeah, because they, get they can't cover. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. It's like, it's no secret. You know why you have to foul in basketball sometimes? Because the guy blowing by you. About to dunk on your head. It's better right, to do so that. 
So from that standpoint, you're right. There needs to be more patience. But I will say this. Might I'm not going to put it all on them kids. Michigan because the offense, the, the coaches could have made that those players feel so much better earlier on in the year. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. I'm glad you bring up and we bring up the Miami Hurricanes. I want to talk about Tyler Van Dyke and his future. I'm not talking about Boston College. I'm talking about his future next here on the Tobin and Leroy Show 560 WQAM.
the matchup we never thought we'd see. Tua Tonga Valoa, Tim Boyle. Huh? Meeting up on the gridiron. We're going to talk about that throughout the day. Not the most salacious matchup in the world. I do want to talk about the other quarterback in town, Tyler Van Dyke. He was a starter. He was a Heisman hopeful. He was benched. Emory Williams breaks his arm. He's back in the starting lineup. Kudos to Tyler Van Dyke, by the way. He had a very good game against the Louisville Cardinals, a game where I thought maybe he was pretty much checked out. But I started thinking about it last night, Leroy, as I was walking around North Beach, Miami at 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Don't ask why. I started thinking, Tyler Van Dyke's got a transfer at the end of the season, right? I thought you'd be thinking, why in the hell am I not at home in bed? I'm I'm going through some things, man. It's probably better for me. <laughs> you know what? Dude, <laughs> by the so, way, you want me to – You do you know what's wrong with him? I don't think there's anything wrong with him. No, I just no, 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 no. What's he wrong with him? He has a, a rare condition. It has to do with his muscles and his skin and the fat don't adhere or something like that. Read up, read up on it. So, like, he he legitimately has a medical condition. Um, yes. Oh. But here's my thing. That has nothing to do with decision making. You see what I'm saying? The reason why he got benched was because of his decision making. Well, he was throwing it to the other team a lot too. Yeah, that's decision making. Yeah. And that was something that he wasn't doing before. So, um. I don't know, but he has a serious, like, he has a, a, a condition. So I don't know what he's going to do after the season. Okay. I don't know what, how do you treat that? I don't know. But if you look it up, it gives the name of it and what it, what his body is doing. And it sounds crazy. Um, So, yeah, but, but that, I, I mean, I don't know to, to be able to come in. And he looked closer than what he has looked to last year than ever before this year, right? Mm -hmm. And so from that standpoint, I don't know what it was. He's feeling better or, uh, man, I don't know. It's hard. Like, I'm not going to be the guy to get on somebody about whether they should be playing or not playing or whatever. I'm not doing that. I'm saying that. I don't see how he comes back, no matter what happens, these final two games against Boston. Yeah, I think they move on to the young guys because you, you're right. But Tyler Van Dyke, let's say he can play next year, and I hope that his physical and his medical ailments are good. But, like, you can't come back to Miami. You come back to Miami, your stock is already pretty low, I would say. Right. You come back to Miami, you're already been benched, and the starter apparent is Emory Williams. Even if you do end up winning the starting job, anytime you do anything wrong – It's going to be a call for Emory Williams. Maybe the best thing to do is just get a fresh start at a new school in a system that maybe you feel comfortable in. I just don't see how your stock can get better if you're Tyler Van Dyke by coming back to Miami. And I like Tyler Van Dyke. I just, I'm trying to do the numbers in my head. Does that make sense? Um, I would, I would say if that's what he would like to do and hopefully play at the next level, I think, with the additions and what they can bring in next year, this might be his best option. But here's the problem is that I literally think they're going to go in next year and and say it's a free for all at quarterback. Of course they will. And so from that standpoint, it would suck to come back and then not even win the job. So that's and then the thing. You do, Cause you, right. you got, four to, you, exactly. you, I'm guessing you still minus COVID. You got four to play five, correct? Correct. Okay. And the COVID year doesn't count, so you would have six to play five. So would he have two years of eligibility left? I think he only have one. Right, because he played his freshman year. Sophomore year, last year was the injury-ridden year. This year is the interception-ridden year. So that's three years of eligibility that he's used up. No, he's used four. Oh, because that he first year. enough last year. year. Right. Then he plays as a, a freshman. Yeah, he did. So that's four years. He's played the last four years, or is it three years? Three years. Okay, so he could probably go somewhere and get two more years in. Oh, so he can get two more years. So maybe he doesn't have to leave Miami this next year, and if things go wrong, then he can transfer out. But I just – I mean, the way I see it is that your stock already here in Miami is pretty low. 
Next year you come in, like I said, let's say it's a quarterback free for all. Yeah, but if you watch, let me ask you if you went if you play for another university and you need a quarterback, are you calling Tyler Van Dyke? I'm sure there's some type of coach or offensive coordinator out there that believes in him and feels as though they can, and I'm not even gonna say resurrect, but they can get the best out of him and say, Hey, look, it's a new start. It's a fresh start. This is a way to put together some really good tape. You don't have the same pressures that you have in Miami. We can get the most out of you. You should come to, let's just say, mm, Cal. I'm just saying, you know, a school that's good, but not great. How about you come on out here, you know, get a fresh start. It's still beautiful weather. You're still having a good time. You're still in a big city. It'll be a good transition. You come, you stay with Miami. Like I said, Emory Williams, everyone thinks that he's probably going to be the starter next year. Let's say it's a free for all. Let's say you beat out Emory Williams. Like I said, Mm -hmm. anytime you throw an interception, if you lose a game, the first thing every fan is going to be saying is we won Emory. Emory Williams, look what he did. He came in and beat Clemson. He was playing great against number four, Florida State, undefeated in a rivalry game on the road. He got injured. He put his life on the line. We need him in there. Why are we going with Tyler Van Dyke? He's proven over the past two years that he throws it to the other team and gets injured. You know what, I, just, you know what I was saying? And, and a coach told me this. He said, if you start listening to the people in the stands, you'll be sitting with them. That's why they're not the coaches, yeah. Right. So – I don't know what they know and what they think of Tyler Van Dyke. I really don't, right? Um, sometimes you get benched for your own good. You know what I mean? So we'll see. I mean, I, I'm having a hard time believing he could go from being that good to that bad without something going on. Something that had to have happened, yes. Right. Absolutely. So, I, do, I do know that they changed offensive coordinator. Or the offensive coordinator left, and there's new – and yeah, Josh Gaddis, your guy. I don't know if he's your guy or not, but he went to Michigan. He went and then, of course, this year you've got new, new, new offensive coordinators every year. But still, some of the stuff that's happened this year. Can just I? Can I just say this, dude? But the running game has been good. You need you. I would say, don't you need a little more speed outside? Yeah, like that dude. You need every team has that guy, right? We have a slot guy. We have a dependable guy, Restrepo. Mm-hmm. Very tip, very Jordan dependable. Jordan. Jordan's like a, a a throw it up and go get it kind of guy, but you need that. You you know what I mean. He had it's Rambo. Right the, he had Rambo his freshman year, and a lot of people are saying that was a big difference maker. Right. Okay. But but that's you know that's what you need because you know when you get rid of when you don't have any speed, all those throws become very tight. When you have not the best receivers in the world, yeah, those throws, it's, yeah, it's tough. But that loss on Saturday was – that was a team loss, bro. That wasn't fully on the right. You know what I would say? I would feel – and tell me if I'm wrong. If they had played every game the way they played against Louisville and still had the same record, you would feel so much different about this team. But they did, though, Leroy. They played the first four weeks like this. And then no, – but, but I'm saying – Kneel down. Right, but that's what I'm saying. They didn't. In fact, they didn't. They didn't play, like, for whatever reason. Yeah, like, I don't know what happened. It's they just, took, like, a four-week break from this and then got back won. to it, even though they haven't won. Leroy, you made the point. It, it seemed like after the bye week, it took them another four weeks uh, to finally get to that point, which is weird. That's why right. That's why it's very disheartening. That's why this season, to me, is disheartening as a Kings fan, because you were like, okay, 4-0, you were ranked. Tough game against Georgia Tech because they didn't they didn't look like the team they were prior to the to the bye. But, but you, you have supposed, those. You have but those. you have those, right? right. That, you know, you're not gonna play perfect. But okay. you figured out a way to win. You you would have had you would have figured a way to win if you had taken the knee. You didn't take the knee, whatever. You lose to Carolina. That's what it is, what it is. I was gonna say. You did win two games in a row. I was gonna say you did, but but okay, it wasn't. We okay. we talked earlier this way. It doesn't matter how you win, you win. Right. But even those wins, you weren't very happy with the win. The 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 how you won, you weren't happy the way you won. But you figured, okay, cool. But after those wins, you that lost to the NC State, you battled against Florida State. The that injury happens. Right. That I you can let's, I'll give you a pass on that. Let's talk I can about give the you a spiral, pass on that. The spiral that happened after Neil Gate. But the spiral happened after Neil Gates. Your That's play just no, made there's a spiral. no doubt about it. You lost to UNC, who was a top 10 undefeated team. Oh, no, they had lost the week before, correct? 
yeah. to so so you lost Virginia. To, uh, to Virginia 41 31. Then you defeat Clemson, you defeat George Virginia, both in overtime. NC State, that was a mess. That was nasty, 20 to 6. But then your other two losses to number four, Florida State, undefeated in the national championship hunt, and number nine, Louisville, who were nine and one at the time, both those games by seven points. When you look at just the scores and the games, it's not a terrible spiral. It's just you haven't played very inspired. That's yeah, but we watched is. all these games. And also, it looks like the uh, <laughs> quarterbacks have been we, handcuffed in all those games also. We, Maybe well, you own. know what? Are they handcuffed I'm, for their own good? I, that, see, see, I don't and, – and here's something we can't, we can't answer. We don't know what they're capable of. Right. We think we know. But those coaches see them on a daily basis. They put together a game plan. They see them run plays all week. And then they try to not only come up with the best game plan, but come up with the best game plan you can execute. And so when you go into a game plan and go, why aren't we doing this? Why aren't we doing that? You can't just dial up any play, right? The biggest misconception of football, right, is like you see a quarterback looking one way and the guy on the other side of the field is wide open. That's because the quarterback's looking the other way, all right? And there are plays designed for some guys who can use the whole field. Veterans can sometimes use the whole field. And there's other players that if you make them look too long, they're going to get sacked. So what you do is you give them two or three reads. Go one, two to three. Go one, two, three. These three guys, we're going to run these routes, one, two, three. So that backside guy's not even in the mix. So if you see him running open, there's a reason why. Because the quarterback ain't looking. They see the route combination going the other way. They just let him go. And a lot of times, you know when those guys end up making plays? When the play break down. And then he just, oh, he's wide open. Yeah, because the play broke down. They didn't get there quick enough. Is there hope for these Hurricanes? We're going to come back and maybe talk a little timeline for the Miami Hurricanes football team here on the Tobin and Leroy Show, 560 WQAM.
card giveaway. We've got a chance for you to win a $250 gift card for Dave and Buster's to watch it all. To enter, go online to the WQAM contest page and submit your entry. If you win, you can go to Dave and Buster's in Hollywood with your gift card and spend the day watching your favorite teams. All on us and Dave and Buster's. Eat, drink, play, watch sports at Dave and Buster's in Hollywood. Timelines are all what it is about sometimes. Jim Harbaugh, he didn't come and blow the world away right away at Michigan yet. Stuck with him, and now things look pretty good. I don't want to hear the jokes. I don't want to hear all that other stuff. Mario Cristobal has come in. There's been an improvement, whether you believe it or not, this season at some point. It takes a little bit of time. Coach Prime, remember Deion Sanders, two weeks into the season, we wanted to anoint him the best coach in college football history and that the Colorado Buffaloes very soon will be playing for the national championship and that everybody's going to want to go there, and they've come a little bit down to earth. Well, they realized how little they were. Right? They also realized their depth They're is really Right. They, got, they, had, they had first team, and that was it. So mm -hmm. the depth is what I think takes time to build. And we've right? talked about this, Leroy, patience. Well, the hardest thing in the world to do is te tell a kid, you know, especially nowadays, to oh, come yeah. in and wait your turn. Right? You don't want to be the guy that you you bringing a kid in and say, we bring you in for depth. Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. If I'm coming from whatever high school, St. Aug I mean, I'm not coming from St. Augustine in New Orleans, obviously, but I'm coming in from St. Augustine. I'm the best player on my team. Story, tradition, high school. I'm a great player. My whole life, everyone's told me I'm awesome. I go to the University of Miami, and they tell me, hey, look, all you got to do, wait like two or three years. We're going to develop you. You're going to get on the field in like two or three years, and trust me, you're going to appreciate everything. You know what I'm doing? Right. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of other schools that aren't going to make me wait two or three years. I'm ready to make that jump. I can play next year somewhere else. I'm out. And when I was in college, and well, like you've heard people say it, you heard people talk about, like, in Miami. Look at the tight ends, the quarterbacks, the running backs, the linebackers. Everybody had to wait their turn. You know, it's not like it's not like that anymore. But here's the other thing. Sometimes you ain't good enough to play right away. Well, and whoever's pumping that. you your head full of this nonsense, you need development too. If you don't accept the fact that you need to develop, don't expect anybody else to expect that out of you. Wasn't it the biggest shocker this year? First of all, that Arch Manning – world beater from great lineage went to texas did not start game one then their starting quarterback got hurt i was like oh well now it's his time to shine nope you didn't see the field what was it you ewers ewers Evers, Evers, yeah Evers, and then yeah, they put Evers. another guy in and i was like wait well, arch man he's not playing they're red shirt that's all that is man you don't think that i i would figure that would, you know the mannings would call up and no, say uh oh no, no it's happened to texas wait. before it's but happened no, to Texas but before. Here's, here's my here's my question. Did any of them play four years? No. Uh so Peyton why? Manning did come in his freshman year due to injury. I remember that. Yeah, but but so so my question is is that there's a level of expectation. You ain't who's come who's coming in at quarterback and expecting to play right away? Who's coming in at quarterback? Because I got I gotta think that quickly. that they didn't it's sell that to him. I think every top recruiting quarterback, number one quarterback in every draft thinks they – Yeah, but, but at some point you got to be real. Well, it all depends on where you go. Now, if you're, going to a, if you're going to a university that has a, a starter already, a, a vet, a veteran, a guy who's, what, two, three years, yeah, yeah it's going to be very difficult for you to start. Yeah. But – if you're going into a program that their guy left already and you're coming in, you have a good chance. Well, I Trevor think, Lawrence did. I yeah. mean, at least he thought he was going to start. I right. think it was a plan with Arch Manning in Texas that he would go and sit for a year. And he has very good, you know, guys around him to tell him, look, this is the way it needs to be. Right. That's fine. And, and that, that's why it's such an easy transition, probably. And it's probably going to benefit him. Let's be honest. God forbid if you don't actually win the job. Right. Like, why are we not considering that? Why all these kids go to school and not even acknowledging, I need to bust my ass a little bit more. That guy's no. better than me. No, you're a top recruit. That don't mean nothing. I know, I'm just saying. So is everybody else sitting in your room. If you go to a major university, you know, like when I went to Michigan, we had every running back. We had 
five running backs. It was me. Tyrone. What was Tyrone? No, no, no. In that? No, that's after me. It was, was me, me, Jared Bunch, um, 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 Tracy Williams, Allen Jefferson, and John Vaughn. Not John Vaughn. Um, Chris Horn out of Arkansas. We were all five, five-star everything, right? I didn't sign my letter of intent until May. So like two months after the signing period. And because I, you know, I really didn't know if I wanted to leave home. So, um, so I, so we had a press conference and they were like, you know, they all were from Ohio or Michigan. And, you know, we had a couple of us, uh, Tracy was from, uh, Tracy was from Sarasota and Chris was from, um, Arkansas, and I was from New Orleans. Me and Ward. Me and Ward were the only two, the first two people recruited out of New Orleans. And so they said, well, how'd you guys well? And they go, you know, I know, you know, I knew him from, you know, Ohio and Michigan and and whatever. And and they looked at me and said, Leroy, how, you know, knowing that all these top recruits play, why would you still sign here when you could have went somewhere else and played? And I'm like, how you know they ain't looking at me going, damn, Leroy signed, right? I ain't giving up the L to nobody. So if you go in to any situation with a certain attitude, the other stuff don't matter. You know, if you don't feel like you got to earn it, then I don't want you on the team anyway. We're not giving you nothing. You know, football is a dog-eat-dog world in that everything you get, you earn. And and that's what every coach will say to you every time you watch a, a, a press. You know who's, who says that a lot? Spo. Well, he earned those minutes. Yeah. Right? So, no. If you give somebody time that don't earn it, you make your team worse. And you only going to be there for three or four years. That coach going to hopefully be there for a long time. He ain't doing it. Play the best players you got. Of course, we've got a lot of good recruits, not only freshmen and that stuff at the University of Miami. We've got a lot of more good recruits coming in. It didn't happen overnight at Michigan with Jim Harbaugh. We're seeing with Coach Prime in Colorado, it's not happening overnight. They've kind of come down to earth a little bit. Realistically, what is the timeline for Miami to at least just be in the ACC championship game or at least be contending for it on a regular basis? I would say give – because you got a pretty good class coming in this year. Mm -hmm. Give those guys until their second year. So two more years. Two more years. You might, be able to do, you might be able to do something next year. But keep in mind, the one position you thought you didn't have to worry about, now you, you got to find again. Yeah. So, Emory Williams is so, and, 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 and that's the thing about football. It's always evolving. It's always moving. What you had last year don't mean that's what you're going to get next year. Everybody just think, oh, we won six games this year. We're going to win eight next year. No, that don't it doesn't mean that. It's not how it works. Right. You do have players that get more there, there there are players you get that are more experienced, right? There, but there are players that leave and you gotta plug them in with younger guys. So it, it, it's constantly moving. Are the Heat now the beasts of the East? We will discuss next here on I would five. Even say that, Dan. <laughs>
It is that time of the day we get into some cats talk, and you know what cats talk is all about. Oh, one second, let me get my. Well, it's the Florida Panthers first and foremost, but also go ahead, Leroy. Let them know. Sexy sounds of the cans going down. Ah, it's not a beer if you're listening on the radio, although I do have a reputation of doing some of that. It was a Funky Buddha last night. You just guzzled that. Now, remember, Funky Buddha is the official craft beer of the Florida Panthers. Whew. That French toast. I spilled it on my hand the other day, Vlad, the French toast beer at Funky Buddha, and I smelled like French toast and syrup all day. It was one of the most glorious things ever, but no. We're talking about something <laughs> different than beer. We're talking about Celsius, baby. We'll guzzle some more. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, yo. Woo! I had one locked and loaded. You locked and loaded? You got cosmic vibe. I got tropical vibe. We're vibing, man. I got that fruit punch. You can put whatever my name you want on it. Wait, you got fruit punch? Yes, sir. That's that new one. The hottest and latest. I'm like Baby D up in here. Oh, man. I don't know about Baby D. How much you you selling that? How much you selling it for? (laughs) Two for five? Two for five? (laughs) Take yourself a little sip. Here we go. Yeah. Hey, uh, hey, listen. Oh Dan, man, yeah. I love you. You my cousin and everything. Yeah, but I don't need to hear you drinking. Oh, okay. Hockey fans, don't sit this one out. When it's game time, make Celsius part of your play and get the energy up. Game day is fueled by Celsius Essential Energy Drinks, the official energy drink of the Florida Panthers. So far, so good this season. I'll be the first to admit. I thought the Panthers were going to hold us hostage a little bit, at least early in the season. Kind of play ho-hum as the season started. Nope. So far, so good. 12-5-1. That is good enough for 25 points. Right behind the big, bad Boston Bruins, who are 13-1-3 with 29 points. And, oh, yeah, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Hope they have some really bad flashbacks at Amaranth Bank Arena. It is Panthers, Bruins. Let's go. So, do you guys know anything about um, The Conjuring? I've seen the movie. the movie. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter is watching all of them. She said it's the conjuring universe. So like Annabelle, uh, she's watching all the movies leading up to the conjuring. So she's right. watching all horror movies right now. Yeah. Why? It's Thanksgiving week. I don't know. She wanted me to take she wanted me to take her to see um so we went and here's let me tell you why. Let me tell you why the kids, the kids get got, right? Wow, go ahead. Because you know when you take your kid to a movie or take somebody to a movie and they mm-hmm. see the previews, oh, they start, they start yeah, making the list. Nuns are throwing rosaries at the screen. People are cussing, screaming. Oh no, they got it. They got it in their mind that this is the movie they're gonna want to see. Very so, good. no, no, hold up, Leroy, Leroy, right. you go see a trailer at a movie theater in New Orleans. It's like, it's like a ticker tape parade in that bad boy. Yeah. Whoa! Oh, no! No! no. Hey, look at this! Oh, no, no! People taking their shirts off. People throwing yeah, crazy. skittles at the screen. Hey, so my yeah. daughter, we went and saw The Marvels, right? Uh-huh. Last week. They showed a preview for Wonka. Is it like a Willy Wonka chocolate factory? The, take the, off? Like the, the OG, like how he got to where he was. Oh, behind, yeah, no. Yeah, she's like, ooh, I want to see that. And I looked over at her and said, no. <laughs> you want to see how this guy became a weird pedophile? No. <laughs> I will I, say, I mean, when I, I saw it when it first came out with um, the OG, but that was yeah. 40 years ago. Yeah, it that was a good 50 one. Years That's ago. enough. I'm done. It's like yeah. white men can't jump. I ain't watching that new one with Jack Harlow. I I, no. I enjoyed the first one enough. Don't ruin it for yeah, me. Yeah, stop making remakes, man. Like they did, ho- they did House Party. That was bad. Sorry, LeBron. Yeah, that was yeah. terrible. House Party, the original, awesome. I mean, it wasn't. A, a Don't theater, do remakes. You know why? Because Kid and Play had already had some street cred. So when they start making a movie, you were in. Yeah, you and can't also, just make a movie like, without with randos. No, and that is not Randall's. It's also about the significance of those certain movies. The fact that we were seeing a hip hop movie, yeah, at the time, or, at the time place. that was being released in 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 
national national theaters. That right. was something big. And it was funny and you knew the characters. It's not so much of a new thing seeing a hip hop movie now. You, you know, and those characters and the new guys that you hot like they they select, they're not. They're not, they're not but, personable yeah. like Kid and Play. Right. They're not. They're it's, like, it's like when you saw when you saw Tupac in a movie. That was right. crazy. Right, right. Rappers aren't in movies. And then right. when you see that they can act, you're like, okay, that's great. But now it's not a new thing now. It's like, yeah, I know rappers and, can so act. You, so you so it better be a big movie. name. It better be right. a big name. Right. I want to right. I want to bring this up, Kuzan. And I was made to be crazy this weekend. So Eight Mile is now on Netflix. And I had a few you friends over, a few friends over, and I said, Oh crap, eight miles on. Never seen it. <gasps> I said, How you I, never seen eight miles? I gotta tell you, there was a point in time, folks, it's gonna blow your mind. You watch the it. The best week. rapper in the world was white, and the mm -hmm. best golfer in the world was black. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's gonna blow your mind. Hey, but, but guess what? Well, I mean, but legitimate, <laughs> legitimate, like the legitimate. Ain't nobody like we didn't treat Eminem like we treated Vanilla Ice. Okay, no. you see what I'm saying? I mean, we treated Eminem different than we treated Bubba Sparks. Yeah, but but that movie took him like to the next level because the movie was good. The only let's see if we had to think of so Purple Rain takes it right. No, oh, Purple Rain's good. I was Purple not Rain. like that movie, and I watched Purple, it. I was like, right. Dang. But Purple Damn. Rain, the win, album, win, Prince. the album, everything. The movie. Yeah, the movie. Storyline. Was it. it wasn't that, just that, the music. It wasn't right. just the performance. Right. But, so but you're saying Vanilla Ice and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 was not groundbreaking. No. Okay, no. just but I'm saying, no, like, can we think of a can we think of another where we don't have to go back to like the Beatles and stuff? Not like Queen, like, like when we because saw Eight Mile was the next. Can we right. think of another? Eight Mile, Ice Cube, Cube is another one where Cube was. In yeah, but he didn't. Mighty movies. He didn't make no movies centered around his music, though. Oh, he couldn't. He couldn't. But we know what I'm saying. I mean, Boys in the Hood is, but you know, I mean, even though we. Boy, know oh, but see, right. but no, no, I'm talking about yeah, Boys. Boys in the Hood was a good movie, had a nice soundtrack, but that wasn't. We talking about two movies that was centered around those artists who were the stars of. the Okay, movie. yeah, I was gonna say because there are some other movies that have. There's some other movies, movies, but we talking about Beatles and Sergeant Pepper's. Um, who with the BG? Hard Day's and, Night and all that stuff. Right, right, right. What Is was that the Tupac only movie with the with the DJ spinning? But it wasn't about Tupac. It, he was just happened to be in the movie. Uh, I don't Juice? know what was the one Juice. with Clarence. Clarence Howard. Oh, oh yeah, oh, Russell uh, and Flow. Russell and Flow. <laughs> yeah, Russell yeah, Flow's a good movie now. That. He didn't get paid for that. He and and that wasn't his music. That was Three Six Mafia. It was DJ. Yeah, Mafia. it was DJ's music. No, right, you're right. It was Three Six Mafia's music. They did the right. soundtrack. So right. Yeah. So, but you see what I'm saying? Like that right there. Because when you hear all the music and you like, you already knew Eminem was on the come up. Mm. And then you hear, and then you see the movie with all this music mm. in, and you're like, "Wow!" And that battle scene at the end, oh, oh yeah. he Clarence, say, Clarence, have a real say, you you can't get me because I'm gonna get me first. Yep, <laughs> put me down first. That's a good question. What's a better song? Lose yourself or whoop that trick? Oh, I mean, who, uh, well, here, what? No, no, what first do I like? First of all, first of all the song? intro, the intro to lose yourself, get you fired up. The better right, song that chick gets you fired no, up. No, 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 no. The better song <laughs> is "Lose Yourself." Better song, the more enjoyable hype song is "Whoop yeah. That Trick." Oh, because hey, wait, look, they had a if whole, bunch, kids, a fight, they had a whole bunch of kids getting in trouble when that song came out because you know they was like, "Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were whooping something." Be careful. Be careful is all I have to say. Nonetheless, tomorrow night, seven o'clock, Amarant Bank Arena. Try to whoop that trick again yeah, of the Boston Bruins. Bruins. Not for Eastern Conference supremacy because the Bruins are up by three points. We don't. It don't matter. You don't need it now. It's still nice. To just it's still nice me. to beat them. See, unlike the Miami Dolphins, the Heat have proven they can beat the upper echelon teams. Mm -hmm. The Panthers have proven they can beat the upper echelon teams, and I'm not saying that the Dolphins can't. But we need to see it. And the thing that I need to see is not necessarily 
how they play, but how they adjust during the course of the game. Because when you look at Kansas City, when you look at um, Buffalo, when you look at um, at uh, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, and not as much the Buffalo game. It was a bad game. So I'm not going to even, like, you play bad games. That was a bad game. You could have made all the adjustments in the world. Team wasn't playing good enough. It didn't matter. But in those other two games, they took something away from you, right? You're not going to beat us with this, you know? And the adjustments took too long. I'm looking forward to Christmas Eve when you can play a team with a winning record at home. I think that makes a little bit of a difference. You know what I'm looking forward to? I mean, a lot of things, but no Chabuena. I'm I'm looking forward to Thursday. Hell yeah. Because, I listen, I like Dan Olofsky. I almost had to dismiss him on Twitter. Well, what'd he say? He said, you can take pecan pie. Mm-mm. Sweet potato pie. First of all, he mispronounced it. Pecan, throw them away. Wait, wait, what? What did this garbage ass say? It was a uh, hold on. It was, you throw me, away what? Let me, let me let me let me read the exact. What? What's he eating? Rhubarb pie. He, he tweeted it. So hold on. Some... No, no, no. Listen, we got I love Dio. All right, but we me all too. Know is very cheap. He wouldn't want to spend money on his wife's first class ticket when they went to Germany. So. Let's go. Oh, if it, there's a lot of things with Dan or Laos. Echelon yeah. of pies. Yeah. Sweet potato pie. It's, well done. Sweet potato pie His at the top. Choices are very. Uh, sweet potato pie at the pot, the top, right? Very surprising at times. Right. We're we going oh, sweet potato man. number one. Oh, man. Hey. Order of hey. pies? Yeah. Hey, you ready for this one? Let's Uh-oh. go. Here we go. You, say, <laughs> you see the uh, Sir John card send out thing? Browns officially signed quarterback Joe Flacco to their practice squad. Well, that's good. You know Joe I had to, you know I had to, to freaking You know I up. had to reply, right? What do you say? It's Thanksgiving. Somebody has to get the check. Hey man, listen. Joe Flacco is a prime example of not wanting to be with your significant other 24/7. He he rather just be with be in the locker room, be with the guys just doing, you know, just doing everything he can instead of being at home with his wife. I don't. I respect him, him for that. I, I respect. Right. <laughs> this show respects you trying to be as far away from I, your family on the holidays. Clearly, as possible. yo, he's there's a you ready? You're Joe Flacco's I age. You should be taking those hits that these quarterbacks take, but he still I got wants. It. It. All right, Leroy, hurt me right now. Take pecan pie and throw it in the sewer, Wait. along with whatever the heck sweet potato pie is. It's pumpkin pie or apple pie. That's it. To which I replied. Should be banned from everything for this take. Thanksgiving without sweet potato pies, just another Thursday. Damn. Oh, wow. So, wait a minute. So, so nothing says I'm intangible like that comment. Wait. Nothing says I'm an intangible like that comment right there. The most bland pie in the world, an apple pie. And pumpkin that. pie is just sweet, uh, sugar-free like sweet pumpkin. potato pie, like jackass. Pumpkin. Okay, first of all, I like pumpkin pie, but if you have a choice between sweet potato pie or pumpkin pie, ain't nobody taking pumpkin Dan, pie. Dan, how about this? Honest truth. I never, ever, ever had a piece of pumpkin pie till I went to college and I thought it was sweet potato pie then. Right, I got it at a buffet one time in Las Vegas, and I was like, "Ooh, sweet potato pie! This doesn't taste right." And I realized, "Oh wait, crap! This it's isn't pumpkin pie. pie, right?" It's but pie. now, so now, now, as an expert, I can. I don't even need to see the sign. I could look yeah, at them and the tell color. the difference. You can see yeah, the color. The pumpkin sweet potato pie is a little more orange. That that pumpkin pie looked dull, right? Apple pie or pumpkin pie? Nothing says I'm white like that phrase right there. Pecan I mean, pie. Where, Listen, where's he from? Where, where's Dan Arlovsky from? Somewhere in the Midwest or something? I'm not. He's not from the. He's not from the football field because he don't know how big it is. He walked out the back of it. Right. He don't know how the size of a football Come field on, is. Man, guy hits his. All right, man. Man, guy makes a mistake. One mistake. Look at. Him. Well, he oh, he's from Connecticut. Mistakes. Surprise! A forty-four-year-old, a forty-year-old white guy from Connecticut talking about apple pie and pumpkin pie. Wait, yep. He knows his pies. No. Oh, you don't. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not. Whoa. No, no, no. I'm not. Whoa, whoa, I'm not, whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not. No, no, no. I said we're not. 
we're not i'm not co-signing what he's saying okay i'm just I saying was... he's trying to make he's trying to say because he's from connecticut i'm like no he knows his pies it's just that he just likes the wrong type of pies that's all okay okay i like apple second pie. Day. Wait, wait, i like apple pie, but you gotta have sweet potato come on man come right. on if you have to dress up your pie by putting whipped cream ice, ice cream, cream oh well uh, damn, uh, uh, rum damn. liqueur on top of it go damn. go i will say this hmm. i will say this I didn't knock him for his pecan pie. See, I'm, I will. Knock I know him a lot of people that pie. don't like it, and I'm you do. You do. You do have to dress it up a little bit. I put ice cream on it, Why but it's still cream? delicious, oh. mm -hmm. right? It's a lot of people food. don't like. Can I just tell you, if you heat a piece of pecan pie, give it a minute, because what's ever what's ever underneath those pecans. Is about Woo! one million degrees. <laughs> That's that Cairo syrup. That Cairo yeah. syrup. Yeah. I don't even and know what Cairo syrup is, but I don't know. It. It's a lot of it. Speaking of Velosky, he's on TV right now. Tell him to shut up. We got some headlines yeah. to get to real quick, and we got to pay some bills here. Leroy, I know you're always going to help me out with this. These headlines are brought to you by New Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks couple quick things to get through. Zach Wilson is now QB3 for the New York Jets. He should be QBO. Dude, literally, I really think Timmy O'Toole or whatever his name is, <laughs> is going to wow. be the starting quarterback for the Jets. And then you got Trevor Simeon, who, uh, who knows. And then I literally think they may have a raffle at the game. If that happens and they need a third quarterback, they'll raffle off to like a lucky fan or cheerleader to play quarterback. And then maybe Zach Wilson will get in. The only okay. thing they did that they should have did was just put him on practice squad. That would have been the biggest insult. I mean, Joe Flacco won a Super Bowl MVP, and he's happy to be on a practice squad. Dude. <laughs> Dude. Dude. I'm tired of people saying this. Let me get let, – let's be clear, okay? If these quarterbacks sitting at home could play football with all the teams that need a quarterback, they would have already been on a team. Stop yeah. it. Stop it thinking these guys going to come in and help your team. They not. Hope Springs Joe eternal. Flacco, Joe Flacco ain't going to help the Browns. No. No. Not better Phillip than the guys that been, not better than the guys not coming been in. all year. Peyton Manning's not coming back. Leave it alone. I, you know what? All right. You, you're right in what you're saying. But I think the problem is, is that when you're looking at the teams, like we were saying, and you're looking at these offenses and then – you know that these teams have great defenses. So when they are on when they are on offense, the fact that you said Kuzan, they 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 got to play perfect football. Like they can't make a mistake, and that's because you don't want to put your offense in a bad spot. And you don't, but you don't trust those quarterbacks. I believe, and this is us fans' minds: a Joe Flacco, a, super, a former Super Bowl winning quarterback who's been in the league for years, a Matt Ryan. A guy, you're not going to be afraid to say, hey, guys, throw the ball downfield, get me first downs, move this team hey. because they're vets. You don't want to put that. Did you see Matt Ryan in Indianapolis? I know that. Then I saw that. <laughs> But you know, but you're not thinking that. You're thinking because of the talent that your team has, all they need is this guy just to be a moderator, just to be a game manager. Because you don't, I don't, I can't even trust as a Jet fan, Zach Wilson to be a game manager. No. I don't think they, the Browns trust DTR. They they hope that he can, but you're not trusting. But they that's can't a different. Trust they that's can't a different situation because he's just a rookie. Can he pick it? Second year. They oh, so yeah. Second year. That's what I'm saying. So you rather? I rather a guy who's 15 years, who's been in the NFL, who's gone through it oh, all, really? just to game manage, than say a yeah, second or third but, year but, young quarterback. Here, can I? Let's be real. And and I want you to give me an honest answer with this. Say if you brought Matt Ryan in, how long is it going to take him to to pick up the offense or get a, acclimated with the wide receivers in the? Oh, well, it's a little too late now, but it would have been at least a month. Right. Okay. So that's what I was saying in Cleveland. Okay. It, it, like, what do you, you bring in Joe Flacco in? What are you going? When are you going to use him? Because the season's there. almost over, and you, you got a better chance with the guys that've been here all year, even you if you don't like it. You're using him as a consultant. Basically. I'm telling you, this, that's what they're using. Him you know for. who's the guy that's loving all of this? Pastronaut. Because Josh Dobbs, you just could throw him in in any situation. He's going to figure it out. 
And he's, in, you know, doesn't matter the offense, doesn't but matter the names. Here, he's I get that. It out. But here's the difference between Josh Dobbs and all them other guys you named. He's been playing football. That's right. True. He ain't been sitting at home or playing <laughs> golf somewhere. <laughs> or an, being an analyst selling, somewhere, selling cars and beer, right, right. Like, oh, the, look, this whole coming off the street and playing thing, dude. It's hard. It is hard. It's not easy to like. You think if so many guys could, you, like, why you think them guys still sitting at home? You know how many teams need a quarterback. Well, speaking of quarterbacks, a former quarterback of the Dolphins recently said a few things about the Dolphins. Think you know who it is? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. We'll discuss that next here on Tobin and Leroy 560 WQAM.
the Lexus dealers. Experienced amazing. Going to keep the party going in just a minute, talking about Tua Tungvalo below on those Miami Dolphins, but there's a party coming up this Black Friday. Join Marcos and Jay Fig, Marcos, a.k.a. God Savvy, Mark God Savvy, Jay Fig, a.k.a. Jennifer Figueroa, and WQAM at Quarterdeck on University Drive in Davie. That is going to be this Friday for a Miami sports watch party from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. As all four of our local teams are playing, enjoy ice cold beer specials, and you can enter for your chance to win a golf foursome and lunch for four at the Woodmont Country Club in Tamarack this Friday. Marcos, it's Woodmont, not Woodmont. Woodmont, 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 WQAM quarter deck in Davie. I'll let you read it next time, Leroy, since you're the. No, Leroy's probably played there. That's why. I'm not saying he hasn't. He probably played there. Hey, I probably touched them all in Florida. I ain't going to lie. Ryan Fitzpatrick, I don't know if he has an inferiority complex to Tua. I don't know. Tua. I don't know why he doesn't like the Dolphins. Dolphins did him no wrong at all. They Nonetheless, he Brian always Flores. seems to be saying stuff about the Miami Dolphins. Brian Flores, he's still upset with Brian Flores. So Fitzy, Fitz Magic, as we call him. What do they also call him? The Amish Cannon, whatever his other nicknames were. Fitz Tragic. Asked if the Dolphins would make the Super Bowl. I'd be surprised to see Miami in the Super Bowl. The AFC is such a gauntlet. There are so many teams with Joe Burrow out because of his wrist injury. That changes the landscape a little bit. Between Kansas City and Baltimore, I don't see them in the top two favorites. So I would be surprised if the Dolphins make it to the February 12th Super Bowl in Las Vegas. Okay, that's valid. I'm not mad at him for that. Are you, Leroy? No, because here's the deal. And here's what we're going to always do. My buddy called me last night. He said, who do you think, who do you like in the game tonight? And this is what I said. I like Philadelphia, but for some reason, Kansas City always wins games like this. So I would not put a penny on the game, right? Philly ends up winning. Now, my logic was sound, but I wasn't willing, I wouldn't be willing to put two cents on it because I've seen what Kansas City has proven they can do no matter who's playing because they have Patrick Mahomes. So if you come at me and say that you acknowledge what, you know, Baltimore is doing in Kansas City, I'm not going to be mad at you. However, let's look at all the numbers and all the numbers that say for the last three or four years, Baltimore has squandered four fourth quarter leads and have not been good in, in, at the end of the season. More recently, right? lost the Texans squandered a lead against the Texans. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying that's their thing. So if right. you're gonna take all of those things into account, then take all of them. I would say this about the three teams involved. And that is the Dolphins, Baltimore, and Kansas City. You can say whatever you want about Kansas City and how they looked last night. You can say whatever you want about Baltimore and the squander games, okay? But the one thing you can't say is that they haven't beaten quality teams. So if you want to say anything negative about the Dolphins, it would be this. They have the talent to do it, but until I see them beat one of those upper echelon teams, it's hard for me to pick them going all the way. Simple as that. Because that ain't got nothing to do with feelings. That's all about facts. That is facts. What about Fitzmagic asked about Tua having an MVP-like season? He says, I think you have that tier headlined by Patrick Mahomes. I think you throw in Burrow in that top tier and Josh Allen. This year, even looking at Lamar Jackson with a nice resurgence, Jalen Hurts, it's hard to do these lists because you always inevitably have to leave one or two of them out. Two of this year, just with the consistency on how he's played, he's elevated himself to that second tier where he's not there yet with some of those guys. That's going to come with playoff wins and other things. So he basically he said, said he basically said what I said then. Win when it counts. Right. That that that's, no that's logical. Not win when it counts. But he's giving the other play, the other quarterbacks, right? He's giving them the edge because he's seen them beat the teams, right? That's it. So you're saying to be the man, you got to beat the man. Until you beat the man, you're not the man. Correct. 
That's logical. He continues on. He was asked why the Dolphins have not been as explosive against good defenses. He said Devon Achan getting back. He thought it would help. He got injured. Their running game hasn't been as efficient or explosive the past last few weeks as it was at the beginning of the season. The reason, number one. And then the funny thing is Tyreek Hill goes out for a little bit yesterday, and all of a sudden they remember Jalen Waddle is on the team and throw to Waddle some balls, spreading it around a little bit is a goal. They're, they are still very explosive. He still believes this team has a very explosive offense. He gives Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle a lot of credit. And then he says the offense is relying on Tua's timing and accuracy, which has been great. It's relying on the run after the catch, which, of course, once again, another run after the catch, which they've been really good at. These explosive runs just haven't been there like they were at the beginning of the season. Part of that is shuffling of the offensive line and the guys in and out. That will be something that will continue to help them as it gets colder and we get into December. Um, I guess, but we're making a lot of assumptions. Uh, yeah, I want to ask you something, Leroy. This is something What's that's that? bugged me, and you would know better than me. Everyone's saying Dolphins need to get home field advantage because I'm going to tell you, you come in here in late January and February, and it's still really, really hot. I don't know. You played in Cleveland. Mm-hmm. You get a playoff game in Miami. The crowd and maybe having your ritual your routine probably helps the dolphins i don't think the heat is exactly going to kill you if you are a team making the trip down here do you think the heat in late january is going to make a difference to a team that comes from up north i think the one thing that we fail to acknowledge right um is this everybody's not from damn florida yeah. So at some point they've played in all these different weather conditions. So stop. Right. Stop with the nonsense. Okay? Guess what? I probably played I'm from New Orleans. And the hottest games, games. <laughs> the, the hottest games I ever played in were up north. It wasn't down south. So stop. I... You think everybody's from South Florida? Oh, because they practice here, they get accustomed to it and what have you. When everybody's getting ready for the season, it's hot everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you you have some familiarity. Have you done it recently? But guess what? The weather down here for all these damn games have been rather pleasant lately, too. I would say it's pleasant. Right. So what are we talking about? You do have a home field advantage because if you are the Miami Dolphins, like I said, you have the ritual, you have weather that you're more familiar with. You definitely, the other team has a home field advantage if you have to go up somewhere cold and freezing, whether yeah, it be Baltimore. I, I never understood that. But I never understood then again, when, when a cold team comes up to South, it's a weather advantage for the South. I, yeah, I don't believe that in the playoffs. I don't believe that. Because it's it's actually well, cool. Who wouldn't want to play in, more, in better right. weather? That's like saying, man, go out to Los Angeles, man. They got the weather. It's perfect. It's clear. It's beautiful. These teams aren't used to playing in that type of Just weather. Just hydrate. Huh? Now, it's different huh? when a warm team goes to some brick ass. That's what cold. I was saying. Yeah, you go different. to Baltimore, that's why you want the home field advantage. Because you don't want to go to Baltimore in the snow with the home field and all that. No. Baltimore coming down here. Once again, the routine, the home field, the, everything is good. But at the same time, I don't think Baltimore is scared of the 70, 60 degree weather that That's they might right. have to face. In. Like what cold ass team is going to be like, no, I don't want to come no. to 75, 80 degree weather. Don't want to go to paradise in January. The paradise, it's going to kill me. The fourth quarter is going to be a, a I'm not going to use the word, but no, you know, yeah. I don't want no heat, no warmth, no heat. I don't understand. In a cold of winter? Okay. No, I don't want that. Let's just say it feels like a little bit of a reach. I'm just going to say that. It feels like a little bit of a reach to say that the Dolphins have the it's weather advantage reach. in late January. Dolphin reach. Am I the only person saying this? Because I hear it all the time on this very station. People say it. And I'm like, let's ask Leroy. Leroy, you What's come that? down to play Miami in late uh-huh. January and the weather's like 70 degrees, not mm-hmm. too hot, not too cold, a little bit of sun. You're okay mm-hmm. with that. It's not the, wearing you down too right. much. The, is it? the only thing that, like, that sun is blistering. Okay. Right, but it's just the sun. But you never played in but, Miami. Um, no. I believe it. Can you believe I'm that? Saying. I play in every NFL stadium except Miami. Wait now, how, how did that happen? Another because thing because I, the divisions every four years. No, you left. We used, to Minnesota. Remember, I was in. I was in um, Cleveland. Right. Then we went to Baltimore. Oh. But then I went to Carolina, 
And then I went to Minnesota. So my only chance would have been if I would stay with Cleveland. It, because every four years you play a different division. So you got to be a minimum of five years, right, with the same team to play that same team home and away. You understand no. what I'm saying? No. You play each division every four years. Right. So when you play them the first time. You're not playing them it, for another four years. You, right. So that next four years, then you play that same team, but you play them at home instead of on the never, road. And you guys never. We never. I switch. Right. We switch. You no. never finish in the same spot. Like you were never second in the division. while they. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with that. It don't has nothing to do with where you finish. No, this, it has nothing the, the this part of the schedule is set, right? But then there's also two. Is okay. So it's a, you play, don't you play one division from the other conference? Correct. 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 Every every four years, you correct. play one division in your conference. Correct. And then the remaining games are within your conference, where you placed. Right. The, but the two, the first two that you mentioned, don't have anything to do with where you finished. Right, but I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking of the simple fact that okay, say that you played the AFC East this year, but right. if you finish second and Miami finish second, you're playing them next year. No, I only played Miami in my you whole have, career once. Right, and that 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 happened to be that they they came, they were on the road. They went to your wherever you were They, at. they came to us, right. right. I'm just it saying, was, in fact, it was the game that Dan Marino tore his Achilles. Ooh. Oh wow! Hmm. And Bernie Scott. broke his ankle the same game. Goodness! And then Jeez. Scott Scott Mitchell's first pass was a pick six. Good God! Were there any penalties in that game? It, no, it was I don't know, but they still Ooh. won. Okay, Miami still so, won. We're saying what the home field advantage is. Yes, the humidity and the heat and the sun will wear down a team a little bit, but I think it's a little more marginal. Stunt and Steve, our dude, dude says, wait till the sun starts hitting the bench for the whole entire I, game. But now, I said if you that. watch the Raiders, what did the Raiders do this past weekend? If you were in the stadium and watching, they, they had brought the huge cabanas out and put shade over the whole well, they're thing. Smart. They know about pool parties in Vegas, so they just brought cabanas. <laughs> they, that's smart. That's all you got to do. What I'm saying, yeah. So, like, there's a way to, to neutralize that. But I do understand. Hey, maybe towards the I end will of the say this. The heat will get to you. I, I will say this, though, Dan. Mm -hmm. You can't put up no tent for that damn cold. That's exactly it. <laughs> okay. Exactly. What? Hey, right, Dolphins. Let's hey. get that regular oh, season home you, field. You, you, know, you know what? Let me ask you this, Leroy. Uh, this, you, and I think you mentioned yeah, it. No the heater that you guys sit when you got to put the, your feet into that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost, you said they almost like you forgot. No, because keep in mind, every like the benches that was later on in my career. Early in my career, they just had those things that look like uh, blow torches, and you would just go, you know, without the bench, and you would just take. Here's what you would do: you would take your uh, the big coat. And you go have the air blow up underneath the uh, that hot air blow up underneath, and you make like a little tent. I almost burned my shoe off one time because <laughs> it was so cold. I kept putting my shoe close. I couldn't feel my feet, and so I kept putting it closer and closer. They go, "Hey man, the bottom of your shoe is melting, right?" right. Well, so, let's get that. Let's but get it was so cold. Advantage. It was so cold that I would wear turf shoes, which is just a rubber, small little spike yeah, bottoms tissue. on the grass. Yep. See, yeah, give me give me the give me 80 degrees in Miami, bro. Give me that. It, that's why we need this home field advantage, though. We're gonna but try no, to go I out think, there and get it. I think if you're the road team, you want that. I don't think yeah. any road team is gonna be upset saying, Oh, you got uh, starting off the playoffs in Miami. Ooh. No, I don't think that. I think they'd be, be doing they do that more about Tyreek Hill than about the West. Yeah, they'll be upset. <laughs> yeah. Playing the Dolphins, yes, but yeah. where they're playing the Dolphins? No. I don't think they'll be afraid. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to do a quick talk about Thanksgiving. Then we're going to get back into some of the Dolphins, get back into some of the heat. There's a lot we need to cover with the heat that we haven't covered yet. Maybe a little bit of the Miami Hurricanes. On the way here on the Tobin and Leroy Show, 560 WQAM.
are underway. Download the free Odyssey app and follow Tobin and Leroy to stay up to date and listen to us live or on demand. Also use the rewind feature to go back and listen to any part of the show that you may have missed. Tobin and Leroy, the Dolphins, Canes, Panthers, Heat, and everything else happening in the sports world on the free Odyssey app. I'm glad Figgy is with us right now because we got some important stuff to talk about. Go ahead, Leroy. Jay Fig completes hey. the Oreo with double stuff. Figgy, don't let them bully us two emo kids. We will represent indie punk rock emo kids. We will represent to the fullest. I guess I'll ask Figgy now because I know Leroy's answer. Is there a such thing as vegan Thanksgiving, Figgy? You're Cuban. You're a lady. You're no, a beautiful. She already person. giving you twisted lip. She already like. So no, there's not the thing. I'm so sorry. No. <laughs> so what do I do Thursday? And you're you already said it. I'm Cuban. There's just no. Hey, but thing. check this out, Dan. Even the dishes that don't have meat are flavored with the leftovers from meat. Is it okay if I have collard greens <laughs> without without meat, Leroy? Without my salty meats? Wait, 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 wait. You eating collard greens without ham? Is it okay? Hey, yo. What's the ham on? is what <laughs> gives it the flavor. Okay. I put a little by Tabasco. The way, by the way, no. I was Ubering yesterday. Mm -hmm. Man, honey baked ham stores. Woo! Woo! They were, they were, man, they had like, they had a line all the way out to the streets. So, people, people were ordering for ham. Can I right say this? Can I say this? Mm -hmm. I'm about done with Uber Eats. Oh, wow. Can I uh -oh. tell you why? It takes a million no, years to get to you. That's because hey, hey, hey. I am so tired nice people in the world, of that. my Thank food you. on the ground of a moped. Mm, that does happen sometimes. I just like, yeah, man. Like, what, what are we doing? Hey, man, we they gotta follow. We gotta follow the instructions that are left. No, but he's talking about on a moped. You drive a car. Oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, but oh, they, oh, drive, like they drive a moped. And they they balancing your food on the middle and in, in between their legs on the ground. Oh yeah, I know. Oh yeah, they got their food between their crown. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no. I want to speak to Figgy. It's real closer quick. to the street <laughs> than the seat. Yeah. It's closer to something. I know that. Yeah, Watch yeah. out what you're ordering, Figgy. I do want to <laughs> ask you this though. Break it down. What is a when I say traditional for a Cuban family? What does a Thanksgiving usually look like as far as food wise? I, I don't need to know what you know the extracurriculars that might be going on in the family. <laughs> Because I know there's going to be a lot of talk and a lot of craziness, but food-wise, we get some lechon, we're getting some turkey, we're getting some sides. What's going on? We actually don't do lechon. Um, that's just Except a lot of work. New Year's and Christmas. Yeah. So, so, so we what, will what have is... turkey. Okay. And then for like those who don't like meat? turkey, whichever. <laughs> she okay. said you like turkey, <laughs> whichever yes. was in front of me and the closest in the table. <laughs> Here, here's um, the thing. What, you gotta like, get, you if gotta people get don't the like dry turkey. turkey we, get, early. we have a chicken also. You have a chicken? A, chicken. a rotisserie chicken? We have like a, we Cornish have like a small one. A Cornish hen? Mm. They don't know what a Cornish hen is. I don't oh, know what that is. No. Uh, right. So, what are some of the sides looking like, Figgy? Is there anything that like is in particularly crazy? Well, there's, there's yuca. Oh, okay, so oh, you know oh, what? Oh, wait, 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 Vlad. Let me break it down. Let me break it down to you. Yuca. Is black people candy yams? Oh, now come! I was, <laughs> now I got, I'm about to start cussing in Spanish. I got to be careful. I, I keep saying corn. Wait a minute. Yo. This is Jay Fig's week, isn't it? Though I mean, this is Thanksgiving. It's turkey, it's, you know, killing a bird. Oh, wow. oh yeah, <laughs> and a chicken. See, she added and a chicken. chicken. Oh man, and I it's a Black this. Friday. You might have eaten some crows. Oh, okay, like that. I see what's going on. If you don't oh, have, if you don't have some yams and some sweet potatoes. It no, ain't Thanksgiving. They don't. Cubans don't do sweet potatoes. In, in a lot of my no. family does not like sweet potatoes. I like sweet potatoes, but they don't like them. Right. So that's why I said. That's be what a, I said, what I said, a lot of ham. There's a lot of ham. A lot of ham. They also have ham. Yes. What type of dressing? Seventeen different ham. Seventeen. Yes. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you do cornbread? Because you got to have cornbread and oh. you got to have some yam sweet potatoes. Oh, um, they don't like cornbread either. So. so and you don't do collard greens. You don't do collard greens. No, I'd be the only one eating Hawaiian bread. No, I don't mess with that. Gotta get the king so see what I'm saying. So they go, Dan. I be, I used to go to Cuban Thanksgiving every year, right? You're going to once uh, this week. So it used to be a lot of black beans and rice, turkey, okay, yuca. Got that. Um, 
17 flans. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I love you some flan. Do you love the flan? Okay, no, let me let me break this down. I it's, had a friend, it's like I'm it's, eating air. Yeah, let me break this down. Figgy, you don't have to you don't have to say anything. I'm not gonna ask you to be honest. Do you really like flan? Because I had an Italian friend, Italian, as he would say, and he'd always get Italian dressing. And one day I was like, man, you know, like I got so many. He goes, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I don't really love Italian dressing. It's just I'm Italian, so I eat it. I like Italian dressing. I, I like it, but I like he, Italian he dressing, but it. I like avocado ranch dressing. Blue cheese oh, is the way to go. You get a vegan blue, blue cheese. cheese. I don't like blue cheese. No, I don't want look at I don't want to eat my salad and get a chunk of something that I can't identify in my mouth. No. <laughs> Do you uh -huh. throw a, a pastelito guayaba in the mix, maybe early? Oh, I love that. I don't like the con queso. I just want the guayaba. I like the guayaba for sure. So wait, here's the deal. Okay, go ahead. Yuka. Mm -hmm. I love it. it. It's too stringy. But you gotta watch the strings. You gotta get the small ones. Right. I feel like you have to have it properly done. Ah. Everybody said, if wait, can can I say this? How many times? Let me tell you, my whole childhood, I heard this about two things: frog legs and oh. gator tail. Oh, I, I say it's disgusting. It Marcus, I wait when I say when I say oh, I had some, it didn't oh. taste good. You know what they both always say, disgusting. Dan? Both you didn't disgusting. have it prepared right. Yeah, both of them are disgusting. Correct, I'm but sorry. there's no such thing as prepared right with that. I Can think. I ask you this, Figgy? Can I forego black beans and rice and just go straight to moro? Oh, I like moro. Moro's better, what is right? That? What is right? that? It's just it's basically they already mixed the black beans. It's the same. Yeah, exactly. But it's already done, and right? It's, it's, it's dry. It's not better. so. Here's, here's like why. Good. Can I tell you Leroy, why I Leroy. haven't been a fan of black beans? I know exactly what it is. Moro is basically a Cuban person's jambalaya. That's what it is. Really? Oh, they put other stuff in it? And the, and the rice and the consistency is so, good like a jambalaya. So here's the deal. South Louisiana jambalaya, here, not these weird jambalayas you get in the other places. Here, here's, here's what I, here's what I, <laughs> what I don't like. I'm not a fan of, right? So Cubans, their bean to rice ratio is way off. Uh-oh. Right, With you put like two cookie. beans in a pot of rice and make the rice black, and then you call it black beans and rice when you don't hardly have no beans in there. Whereas New Orleans red beans is almost like a soup that you pour with a little bit of rice, mm, right? And so, so that's that's the difference. That's the difference. So you have black bean and rice. I wanted black beans and rice, mm. you know. But wait, wait, you said, wait a minute, did you just say they have black bean? And yeah. rice? It's like two beans up in there. So, but, it, but here's the kicker. I, I don't, and, and here's another reason why. I mean, so when I was a kid, right? And, and Cubans can feel me on this one. When I was a kid, everything that we ate, rice was used as a cutting agent to stretch mm -hmm. it. Now that's and a so lot of cultures. Mm -hmm. When I got a lot of broke cultures, every when culture I got, uses right, rice almost. <laughs> not not as much as back home, dude. My mom used to mix eggs and bacon with rice, so we could use only a couple of eggs and stretch it out. Right? I know what's up. So when I got older, I'm like, I'm not eating rice. Mm. So imagine me ending up in Florida, it where everybody here. uses rice for everything. So mm -hmm. that's why, like. I don't I don't like like pollo and I don't like um when I go I don't I don't like Mexican food because of the rice. Too much. Man. Wow. We're also late yeah. on time, guys. All right, you're, 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 you're a rice hater. <laughs> I am. We're gonna discuss further. But I got some yeah. I got some history with rice. Right. Okay. So well, me, me and rice got, got some me. history. We're going to get into that next and get you up to date with everything that's happening in the sports world here on Tobin and Leroy 560 WQAM. Fight for your rice.
My man, so much to get to in this final hour before we get into rice hatred. And Figgy, is there something coming up in the next segment? Are we going to be graced with the presence of two regulars of this show? What do we have? We are. We're going to have our pick draft. You thought we'd forget, but we did it. So the pick draft coming up in just a few minutes. But first, let's go ahead and get things sorted out with the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center headlines. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Before we get into anything else, man, we haven't talked about this beautiful weather that is really going to affect any team that comes in here in late January. Let's get a weather update from the lovely Leroy Hoard from the Demesman and Dover Law Firm. You're actually First of all, dude, don't associate me with that. That don't sound right. That's the toilet. Hold on. That's the window opening. Man. The blinds. Oh. The blinds. That's the sound effect we have. Okay, cool. All right. Go ahead. It's pretty calm outside. Winds are coming out of the east at about 10 to 15 miles an hour. It is partly cloudy, which means that there's always going to be a slight chance for rain. Uh, and I would say it's right around 80 degrees, although it does feel... A little bit cooler. That's probably because the humidity is gone. I'm sick of you, Leroy. It's What's 81 up, dude? But you're always right. Like, come on, man. Dude, like, at I'm least be wrong one time. I'm outside every day. Hmm. I'm golf. Oh, I'm outside. I golf, I golf every weekend. I have to get dressed for the weather. I understand the temperature. A man that is one with weather. Appreciate yeah. that. Oh, no, because you know what? You you better be damn sure when I get up to golf, I got to get up at like 4.30 in the morning. I got to go through stretching, getting a jacuzzi, stretching the pool and all that. If I'm going to be that committed, I'm going to be damn sure I know what the weather is going to be like before I commit all that time to that. Hell yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the weather, the Heat defeated the Bulls 118-100 last night. Duncan Robinson, 22. Hami Haquez, Jr., 19. Bam Adebayo, 23. We get the Cleveland Cavaliers tomorrow at 7.30. The Cats, they got a win over the Oilers, 5-3. Next up, the Big Bad Boston Bruins come to town tomorrow at 7. Zach Wilson, he is third on the depth chart behind the pizza guy at the MetLife Stadium. <laughs> when it comes to quarterbacks, the Miami Hurricanes look to finish the season strong against Boston College Friday at noon. Soccer, the United States men's national team lost to Trinidad and Tobago last night, 2-1, to one, but they advance on aggregates 4-2. to two. They have qualified now for the Copa America and the CONCACAF Nations League and the Miami men's basketball team, 10th ranked. They're taking off the week. They get Kentucky one week from today in the ACC-SEC Challenge. Now that we got you up down the headlines, Leroy, tell us why you hate Rice. It's just, um, as a kid, you know, you almost hate that thing that you were forced to eat out of necessity. So you hated ice cream? If, if Oh, you didn't have to necessity. I wasn't forced to eat ice cream, dude. Every meal I had rice to stretch the food that we had. So when I got older, I'm like, I'm doing well enough. I don't need to cut my food. And that's how I always looked at rice. Mm. It, it's, it's, it's about your upbringing. Like, Almost like it, sawgrass. It's, it's a filler. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So when you spend half your life, the other thing, you haven't lived until you got that big ass can of um that big ass can of peanut butter with the oil on the top from the government. Yeah. No, no, I will tell you this the government cheese nowadays is not what the government cheese used to be. Government oh. cheese back in the day was so good. Hey, because it was real, but here's the deal. Awesome. Once you crack the seal, you always had to cut like a quarter inch off. You got a little piece. You got that hard piece. That, that hard piece that's that's that a, you had to a, cut off. Door and, stopper. You put it as a door stopper. And then the other thing is, is sugar puffs. Hmm? Right? You had them government puffs hmm. where you just got a big bag. It looked like a big old bag of dog food. And and the other thing is, I think I know why I don't like milk now that I think about it. Because <laughs> government milk was that powdered milk. Oh. You put water in it. Oh. Yeah. That powdered milk is nasty. Right. So, like, yeah, man, I grew up dirt poor. So when I finally got out of there, right, I had a list of things that I had banned from my diet. Figs. Oh, figs. Jay Fig, you don't understand. Everybody in New Orleans had a fig tree in their backyard. Ugh. And you would spend your entire youth sitting Picking in the fig tree fig. just plucking the figs and eating them. 
And your and your grandmother and mom and stuff would say, "Go make throw the football." Fig, There's everything. birds flying around the fig tree. Yeah. You had to throw a football at the birds. Oh, and man. so you and so like you would have thing. or like think about this. And this is the only thing that slipped through the cracks, Dan Day. It's the only thing, because I love me some bread pudding, right? Mm -hmm. But you know how you get the little ends to the bread. And nobody used that for a sandwich. You would get your butt whooped if you threw that away. Mm -mm, that goes okay. into a that goes into a big bag, and goes into the freezer. And then about two months from now, they pull that out, thaw it out. It's all stale and nasty. That's what you make your bread pudding with. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they, they no man, come on. You know what the saying is in New Orleans mm. about a pig. Oh, the only we thing we eat everything from the rooter to the tutor. Rooter to tutor, and the only thing you lose is a squeal. That's it. You ever like, had that? On. You ever had that pigtail? They put it in a pan and they just kind of fry it up. Hey, yo. Mm. Mm. But I'm telling you, you know how Vlad. Now, Fig, I don't know how they how they have how y'all corner stores work in Kindle or wherever you live, right? Okay. But in the corner store, you know how when you go up to the counter and you see them little pickled eggs and the pickled sausage and stuff like that. Here's what they had in New Orleans, right? You had a big old jar with that same pink fluid, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. had some tongs, the little baggies, and you right. had one thing, pig lips, pig feet. Yep. Pig feet. <laughs> Every and once in a while, you get a little ear in there, too. That'd yeah, nice. and you take, you, take, you take the pig lip and put it in a bag of barbecue potato chips, shake it up, and you have yourself a day. Mm. Y'all ate chitlins, didn't you? Oh, of course. No, I didn't. Oh, I do. I did not till I found out what Hoghead cheese? You never had hoghead hog cheese? Hoghead cheese. Yeah. Mm. Hog you know what hoghead cheese is? That's just... J Fig, you know what hoghead hog cheese is? No. Me either, but we ate it. It's basically <laughs> processed pig brain. It, it, wait, it, you know what it looks like? It looks like jello. It is. Except it almost looked like... um. It, it looks like... Jello, but meat. I can't yeah. explain it. It's it's a jello meat. Jello. What about you know? Like you know what else is a staple of uh poorness in New Orleans? Sardine sandwich. Well, that's what I was saying. My dude, dude, heat cult. He seen me doing eating those minez sandwiches, man. Straight up oh, bread, wait, mayo, wait, wait, bread. Ah, minez. Minez, minez sandwiches. It. It's minez sandwiches. You talking about mayonnaise? Yeah, buddy. Yep. Yeah. Can't got nothing else to put. Minez. Dude, My can man? I just tell you? Where's the wire? Black, black, black. Where's the wire? Black. Let me tell you. Let me tell you something. And this is no lie. And Dan Day uh -huh. could attest to this. Everybody in New Orleans have their word. Right? Mm -hmm. It's the one word that they pronounce crazy. In your family, everybody have one word. And it almost identifies them as who they are. They say, somebody say, Oh, that boy, that he, 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 he. oh, that that's Uncle Ray, mm -hmm. right? Just hear him talk. That's just it. So he's my name. It, it just it, like I can't explain it. I also call it a buffet and not a buffet. Buffet. Let's go to that buffet, buffet in the casino. It, it's crazy though how close to French we are, because uh, you need to say like so. For example, J Fig, say if you go to uh go to uh Publix <laughs> and you want to get a sub, right? <laughs> Mm -hmm. They ask you if you want mayonnaise, mustard, pickles, lettuce, whatever. You know what they ask us in New Orleans? You want it dressed? Yes, yeah. They Dress don't ask you all what? other stuff. Everybody get, everybody get dressed up. Tobin Marco's coming up next. We're going to do our pick draft here on Tobin Leroy Show 560 WQAM. WQAM.
Tobin, Marcos, Tobin, take it away. It's all yours. Hello, boys. Hello. Hello. You think I was going to put my, my picks in the hand of anybody else? Stupid. Well, no, if, if you lose, you lose on your own. That's exactly, that. dude. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Tobin, I'm happy that you're here so that people can start f- asking a question Did you get fired? Uh, yeah, no, it was just a suspension. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> first of all, let's be clear. I'd get fired before him. Yeah, no, I did not get fired. I did not get fired. But uh, so sorry if you ho- if you were hoping I got fired, I did not get fired, but I did get suspended. Atomic wedgie to go lens. Sorry. Wow. Look, yep. okay. it's a full house. It, it was is. worth it. It was worth it. It was it'd be only simply because he wouldn't let us do the smelling salts. So revenge must have been had. That's what that's what happened there. But uh, no, I'm ready. Let's go. We let's let's football music well, you, this up. Football I'm ready music to roll. it up. Who's uh? I know I pick last again. Frog boy picks first. He's three and six. I'm four and five. Uh, Birderer is four, four and one. And then uh, and then Leroy's safe in the catbird seat. He's seven and two. I have no what words. Is, That's what he is. That's what he's in. He's in the catbird seat. No words. I can't lose. I can lose not every Caddy, game. You can't catch you me. Catbird. Cut, not you with that term again. Stop. All right. Let's it's go. The thing. So who's first? No, Marcos. Marcos. Decide your fate, boy. We got Thursday, Friday, and Sunday games. Unmute yourself, you bum. Fix it. Better? Yes. yes. Better. Oh. Uh, good. Because that first pick was stupid. This is my real pick. <laughs> Miami <laughs> Dolphins, baby. Give me the points. Punch the money line. The under. Don't like your right hey, w- why do you have a gold mic? You know, I have this one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, uh, you guys tell me something. Does this mic look familiar by any chance? Uh, oh, don't, oh, don't, worry it, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Of course, he has a gold mic. The guy wants to be a show, a, sh- a game show host. A game show host has a gold <laughs> mic. Oh, you missed Family Feud yesterday, dude. It was good. Oh, my God. It was good. Uh, all right. I. I I'm going to go with a little Turkey Day football. I'm going to take the late game, the Seattle Seahawks. I'll take the six and a half points against the San Francisco 49ers. All right. All right. You sure Gino's playing? I don't care. Kenneth Walker is not playing. 12th man, dude. 12th man. We got it all together on the turkey. 12th man of the turkey day. Murderer, what do you got? I'm taking the Lions. All right, Detroit. They are also on Thanksgiving. They are hosting Green Bay. They are minus seven and a half. All right, Leroy, uh, yours is simply for pride. Uh, see how yep. you could run up your record. What do you want? I am going to take the oh, Texans over the Jaguars. Ooh. All right. They are one and a half point underdogs at home. Apparently, Vegas hasn't gotten the memo. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit weird. I mean, they, they already beat Jacksonville on the road this year. But all right, if you if you insist, Vegas, that as uh, Leroy getting a point and a half from uh, the Houston Texans, Marcos, no. what do you got? Uh, yeah, that's right. I am okay. Tobes, give me the Ravens minus four against the Chargers. Well, right, Sunday night action. Sunday night football. The Ravens are giving three and a half points right now against yep. the Chargers. Yep, yep. All just right. what I He's said. You got Baltimore. That's not what you said. You said the opposite. Totally what I said. <laughs> Definitely the opposite. <laughs> uh, I'm going to take the Philadelphia Eagles. I will lay the three and a half points against the Buffalo Bills. That's crazy. I feel like they're going to smoke Buffalo. Um, so give me the birds. Give me the birds minus three and a half. J Fan. My turn. I know you hate birds, but what do you got? This is the worst holiday ever. No, I'm kidding. Probably my favorite. Uh, I'm taking the Chiefs again. 
Chiefs Ooh. minus nine against Las Vegas. Oh, who why gave did I say all... that? I take it off. Whoa, back. Take nope, it off back. Whoa. Came out of my mouth. <laughs> Chiefs minus nine okay. against Las Vegas. Too late. <laughs> I, I, you know what, Chief Nick? You're going to win this. Watch. Oh, yeah. You, I I mean, you keep riding that Chief train. A team that has this wide is the receivers. the second time I picked them. So a yeah, team yeah, that's full of wide good. receivers with lobster claw hands. Uh, yeah, JJ oh wants them minus the nine. I, I know. I think got Taylor Swift hands. Uh, right is it my turn? That? Your turn, Leroy. I am going to take the Arizona Cardinals. Wow. I like that game. Over the Rams. The, the Cardinals are getting a half a point. All right. There you go. Um, Marcos, last pick. What do you got, buddy? Never been done before. I'm taking the Dolphins again. Can I do that? <laughs> oh, go away. Okay. <laughs> All right. With <laughs> that being said, I will take the Denver Broncos minus one and a half to cover the Chili Pepper. Right. Cleveland Two Browns are going down, dude. You, be, you, you wait. You know what's funny? I yeah. like this, Marcos. You have gone against the Cleveland Browns every chance you get. Yeah, like when is the magic gonna run out, dude? Come on, I'm trying to win something here. Okay, you win that chili pepper. Oh, still I can't it. believe I'm saying this, but give me Tommy DeVito as a dog at home. Whoa! I'm taking <laughs> the New York Giants. <laughs> Against the New England Patriots. Oh, my goodness. It is slim pickets out there, boys. Getting desperate like in this, this joint. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Jay Fig, your last pick. I don't I don't know. I don't know. Take something weird. Not a game. You gotta pick one. Uh <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take, I'll take the Falcons. She's taking the Atlanta Falcons, who are hosting the Saints, much to Dan Day's ire. She is going with Atlanta. Uh, Cornbread. Wow. Um, one point favorite against the Saints at home. All right. Leroy, Can I your take final. Back one of my picks, please. No. Uh, <laughs> it's I was reading it, and then I, I said like it out loud. Mistake. That's a mistake. False start. Sorry. Um. Did anybody take Monday night? No, no, I believe so. I That's will Vikings take Bears. the Vikings minus three and a half over the Bears. All righty, there you go. Those are the picks, everybody, for wow. the final week of I November. Can get to and a throw, this month. a throw at the dartboard of doom is on the line. You guys excited for hard knocks tonight? No, Ooh. I was waiting for that. Why not? Why not? I'm not. I don't care. What, what, but come on. What? Guess, guess how many minutes Corn, I've watched. Cornyo. Wait, wait, wait. Cornyo. Guess how many minutes I've watched of Hard Knocks. I wait. It's the Dolphins, though. 20. The Dolphins, though, dude. 20. It's you, don't Dolphins. Dolphins. you don't want to give it a little. You don't want to give it a little looky Lou? No. You'll he's tell gonna me. Go, he's going to watch what 20 are you minutes. Watch because here. Here's what, here's, 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 what hap- here's what happens. Right? I'm going to get a text. What time does it come on? Eight? Uh, I'm not sure. Also, so you oh, know at 10? Obviously, we're very excited about that. At 10 15, I'm gonna get a text, dude. Dude, you don't know what you're missing. Yeah, you're probably right. Nine you're o'clock right? tonight. <laughs> you're right. Huh? Ruckles, Ruckles gave a look when I said 10 p.m. He was like, nine o'clock, dude. Like, Bro, Come on. Okay. Time. Well, nine time o'clock, dude. To, be nine o'clock. By that Marcos, time. to be honest with you, yeah, you got a lot of time to rest since you ain't working. Oh, I got two shows tonight at the Improv. <laughs> it's a Tuesday. What are we doing, guys? No worries, Marcos. I got kicked out of the house, so I got plenty of time to cover you. Oh, my couch is available, Dan. Kicked out. Hey, 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 I need a couch. I need a car. That's Ma- rough. Marcos helps me out with a lot of things. A couch, a car, maybe some other things we can't talk about on the radio. Is there any, is there any time of the year to get kicked out worse? To get kicked out of house than Thanksgiving. New Year's oh, better. Tough. Thanksgiving's tough time. That's a yep. tough time to get kicked out of house, dude. Man, it's messed up. Biggie, what? I mean, it's not like you could come by. Anything, me and your pops still, can hang out. Work. Your pops Ooh, and I have had some good times. 
I don't even know his name. I called him the we'll wrong name all the time. See, what, that's what, why you're not invited because you didn't what, know his name. And I've said it so many times. Names I've given your po- I don't want to go because I might get the right name, but I've called him some wrong names to his face. And his response is always, yo, you want to go get another drink? Yeah, that sounds about right. That's, that's tough. <laughs> tough. J-Fig's uh, shark diving father, that's tough. Hey, that's tough. I'm going to be honest that's with tough. you. Tough man. J-Fig's dad scares the hell out of me. That man yep. can go. He knows. Yeah. He, gives me, that, got it, he gives me that Ooh. look. He gives me that look. And I'm like, oh, Oof. man. I don't know. Don't mess with him. That's I'm Papa not, Starfish. I'm not going to a man who survived shark bite. He what? Yesterday, he told me, make the wrong pick, and you're going to end up a starfish again. Hmm. Wow. He's, He's right. No, because that – no, it's not. It's going to be something worse. We already done starfish. Starfish is I know, bad. but he didn't know that. But the fact <laughs> that he told me that yesterday was not okay. Is well, why don't he help you? No, no, because no. no. okay. right. it's picking football, it's picking football games. And it's not being a secret agent. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm telling you, does he leave at night? And does he does he leave like on the weekends and like flies to like um, a foreign country and do some stuff for I the government? I can't disclose that information. <laughs> I'm telling you, Man. I'm telling you, there's very few men. He is more intriguing, like the, the than the most interesting man in the world to me. It's like real life, true lies, man. Except he's not. I think I've heard him. And your mom is so nice and outgoing, and he just sits there and looks at me, like, "Yo, huh. I didn't take nothing. I'm sorry." Well, she bites too, so. Uh, I believe uh, it. Yeah. Tobin, Marcos, right. when are you guys gonna be back on? Break it down for us next week. Yeah, next week, dude. And Leroy, you're not gonna be here tomorrow as you chug an energy drink. Yep. So is it Vlad and I? Figgy, are oh you going to join us tomorrow? Vlad, Vlad, you are the worst. Wait, what happened? I will be on for uh, pregame on Friday, though. So you do have game day on <laughs> Sunday. Am I wrong, though? Am I wrong? That's going to start at 11 a.m., correct, Eastern <laughs> yes. Time? Yes. Am I wrong? <laughs> yes. I just answer my question. Am I wrong? Not you're not wrong, but you're okay, so that's wrong. It. That's it. That's you're it. Yeah, I got to go. All on right. that note, I got to go. We're going to wrap things up. We're going to have a hard knock life next here on the Tobin and Leroy show 560 WQAM.
Uh, I am excited about tonight. It seems like a lot of people here in South Florida are excited. My dude, dude, Chili Willie hitting me up. Of course, we've got Heat Colt in the chat talking about hard knocks tonight. It's not just hard knocks. Great job all the time by hard knocks, but it's hard knocks. Miami Dolphins, Mike McDaniel, Tua Tunga Baloa, the whole crew, Tyreek Hill. That's exciting right there. It debuts at 9 o'clock tonight on HBO. I know I'm excited. Leroy, you said you're not as excited about Hard Knocks. No, I just never ball. been – I just never really been a fan of it. Oh, it's so good. Even I watched – last year, me and um, Heat Colt were even watching, like, the end season with the Arizona Cardinals. Like, I thought it was great. The production value is fantastic. It's cool. It's a nice storyline. You're not into it. You know what I hate? Here's what I hate. Because if something goes wrong – if somebody screw up, then they're going to blame it on hard knocks. And I just would rather not get caught up in it. Quick note. I heard Alec Ingold talking the other day. He said he was part of hard knocks with the Raiders, but that was at the preseason part. He said you had like 40 people running around videoing. He says this in season hard knocks, it's only like a five person production crew. So it is a smaller operation, maybe less of a distraction for the team or less of an excuse. I don't know. I just, if there's a chance, and here's where people, here's where me and Tobin fight all the time. If there's a chance that it could be a hindrance, don't do it. That's where I am. I don't think, I think their hands are kind of tied. They say. I know, I know they are. I know they are. They're all putting on a good face, right? And this does seem like the type of team that could get away with it because of the characters they have. Yet at the most important position, he ain't having it. Tua is not having this nonsense. No, that's why Mike McDaniel has to shoulder a lot of the, the, the weight right here. He has to be the main character, right? I tell you what, hard knocks to leave if they have a couple of conversations with Mike McDaniel and they ask him one question in the last 45 minutes. How would you like to edit the one-on-ones with Mike McDaniel, the diaries with Mike McDaniel? Oh, if I were an editor, I would be Ooh, not The cutting room floor would be uh, two Ooh. Godfather movies. Ooh, I want to talk. I want to interview the executive producer and producers and editors after this hard knocks and see how they feel about Mike McDaniel. Figgy, are you all in on hard knocks tonight? Maybe, maybe not. Is, is Scooby all in? Do you watch? He's it all Scooby? in. I'm not even messing. Like, I have a bunny rabbit. His name is Rami. Rami and I like eat together. We watch TV together. I brush my teeth around him. Do, do you and Scooby actually watch TV together? You think he's going to be in for hard knocks? Um, We actually do watch TV sometimes together. And when he does sit down next to me, he usually falls asleep. <laughs> Vlad, are you in on hard knocks? Hey, hold on. Any of my teams playing tonight? No. Hard Knocks is only about the Dolphins. It's tonight, well, 9 o'clock. It's well, preview. If my teams are playing, I'm going to watch my team play. Okay. I'm thinking. No, Nick's played last night. I think I'm pretty much. Okay. No, I think, yeah, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. I mean, I got to. We're going to be I on think, tomorrow, so we, we gonna have be, things to watch. I think it's going to be super exciting. Now, I will tell you this. If you know it's going to be super exciting. When is this season starting? Is it starting from a what It's point? starting from after the Kansas City game with the bye week. It's like almost in real time. They throw it out there. Really? Now, if you want to yeah. watch some college football, you get Bowling Green and Western Michigan at 7. That's you know exciting. You know what that is? Max Eastern and Michigan, baby. Eastern Michigan and Buffalo at 7.30 if you want to wait an extra 30 minutes. That's that's exciting. Uh, I'll take hard knocks. Max. Oh, we got, we got uh, college basketball. You got some, you know, the holiday tournaments. Once again, I'm I'm gonna be locked in on hard knocks right there. The Dolphins, Mike McDaniel, Tyree Kill. It's too late. That Jalen Waddle, Christian o'clock. Wilkins. It's nine o'clock. Christian nine? Wilkins. Yeah, nine okay. o'clock. Good, good. On the East and Pacific time zone, so they're gonna delay it a little bit for the PT. I'm telling you, Christian Wilkins. That's interesting. In season, and that's what I love about the in season. It's almost like in real time, like literally, they just play back the week. So is Tyree going to take him to the marina? I <laughs> need. I don't know if that's gonna happen. What are y'all doing, man? I'm not. I'm not making jokes. I'm well, being we serious. No. <laughs> oh, although I did, I did do one with uh, because the Browns signed uh, uh, Flacco? Joe Flacco, and I said, "Well, it's Thanksgiving. Somebody got to order that check." Ooh, Braxton Berrios. You know, he can take. He, he's got the reality TV bug already with the Copa <laughs> sisters, so he kind of knows what he's that doing. He with the, He with her no more. He ain't with her. 
But he's yeah, still got he's saying like... that he has that experience already. Thank you. For and now he has more of the experience because he's dating that TikTok girl. There you go. That's what it's all about. Dating a TikTok girl after you get kicked out of your apartment and you have nowhere to go on Thanksgiving. That's Wait, what it's all about. You or oh, talking about I was Braxton talking about Braxton Berrios. Berrios. I'm sorry about we're that. Talking about, yeah, we're talking about Braxton Berrios. Not you, Dan. Oh, I'm sorry what he's that. trying to do is he's trying to find a way to find himself a TikTok girl. Please. I don't know him. But I'll help but you out. Braxton Bar thank you. Braxton Berrios, he's got he's got experience. So maybe the guys can lean on him a little more. You know, you have to have a game plan. You lean on your veterans in the locker room during the season. Well, this is a different type of game and a different type of season. And you got a guy right there that's got experience. You can lean on him. I think it's going to be interesting. I think it's going to be fun. And mainly because it's a team that I'm familiar with and that I care about. And like I said, the end season is almost like real time. Like if they they're going to play back after the win against the Raiders and you're going to see some of the stuff that happened after the game and you're going to be like, wow, that went on. It's like a continuation of watching the game. It is exciting. It is fun. How long does it last? Well, you mean how long? How long? The, is how long are they in town for? I have no clue. What uh, HBO? The yeah. Max? Yeah. I. Uh, this is probably going all the way to the end of the season. Just about maybe the Cowboys because it was five weeks. The the Jets preseason was five weeks. So. I know last year it ended at the end of the no, Cardinals you know season, it but they didn't make the, the playoffs. Season. You're right. It it goes to the end of the it year. Goes till, it goes till the, the clock runs out it on does, your season. Because I remember the Colts and I remember them talking Ooh. to um uh what's this the defensive lineman? Uh the one that the Niners, the one that uh the Forrest Bruckner, I think that's his name. They were talking to him after the they had lost to the Jaguars and they didn't make the playoffs. They only had to win one game, but Carson Wentz couldn't win one game. And they had him talking to like his his position coach and how frustrated he was, and you could tell the anger. It is you depressing could, that yeah, last you could episode. You tell the anger when when teams have have high expectations or players have expectations for their team and they don't live they don't live up to it. Yeah, the frustration is. Yeah, you could tell. You could I tell. think you guys are convincing Leroy on watching Hard Knocks tonight. They're not. I mean, Leroy knows a lot about the Dolphins. He's, he's he doesn't pretty, even know anymore. He's They're not. Nice. From what I understand is curious. you have two types of guys on the show. The guys that show out and the guys that shut up. There's guys that are usually pretty loud in the locker room and stuff, but they're like, uh-uh, I ain't messing with this. They shut themselves up. There's the other guys who are like, ooh, I'm on TV. I'm going to be a louder, more. Can I tell you if there was hard knocks. When you played? When I played football, I would have probably been cut a couple of times. Because some of the you... things – that I said about players or guys that I went after was just like great. I, I told a guy one time, I said, Man. why are you a Hall of Famer on Thursday and then get roasted on Sunday? Every game. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want you, I don't need you to be a Hall of Famer against me. I don't count. I need you to do it on Sunday. You don't know what you're talking about. I say, okay. You know the guy extracurriculars on on Thursday. You know mm. he want to rah rah. Let's go. Uh, he doing this and on Thursday and then on Sunday he in chase mode. Yeah, we mm. had those guys. Everybody got them. Yeah. Should be interesting though. Well, we're gonna see who's that guy tonight on in season hard knocks nine o'clock HBO. If you need uh, a special website, I don't it. have a special website for HBO, so don't hit me up. Come on, people man. hit me up all the time in the DMs. Yo, yo the give map, me that man. special. Get me that special website. I don't have a special website. By the way, the only thing special you can get today. What we got? Marcos. We can use his code. To his get code. Oh, that's off. right. They won last night. Yeah. Is the code oh. still? Heat win. Heat win. Heat win. 50% off David. Papa John's. Load it up. Yeah. Load it up. Leroy, enjoy. Happy Thanksgiving, Figgy. Happy Maybe Thanksgiving, you'll get Happy Thanksgiving Leroy. Yeah, man, y'all have fun with friends and family. You know, Dan, make sure wherever you go, you introduce all these crazy people to some sweet potato pie. Mm. And also and to news. you, sir, good luck to your Michigan Wolverines this week. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Go oh, home. yeah. You know, listen, if y'all don't hear from me until next Monday, you already know what happened. Yeah. But you know, if Michigan put it on them, I'm going to be chirping. Cause that's what I do. Hell yeah! Let's <laughs> go, Did you big do the commercial? Blue. 
Have you seen the commercial? Of uh-uh. don't have a mask? No, I've seen the commercial. Mm. Let's it's go. Fun. Let's go. Hawk and Crowder are next. They're going to be live out at Kia in Hollywood for J Fig. Don't Nero. forget Friday. Don't forget oh, Friday. Don't forget quarter, quarter deck. deck. Quarter deck. Comes to I, us at quarter I deck. said, I'm going to come down to see y'all. Save me a spot. Yeah, save me a spot. It's like five minutes from my house. I will save you guys well. Open up the bar tab. I'll be there early. Yep. We got you, Dan. I might be. Yeah, where is it on Davian University? University? No, it's on. It's on uh, yeah. Flamingo and uh, Sunrise. Flamingo and Sunrise. Oh, okay. Um, I got no Davian word. University. I heard, okay, it's a different one. Different one. Different one different. University it's Drive in Davian. University in Davian. So just south, of 595. just south of five ninety five. Just south of five ninety five. Two to five p.m. Tomorrow. At quarter deck on University Drive Damn. in Davie. I would have showed up Don't to forget. the wrong one. Exactly. If you need more information, hit me up at Dan Day Radio. I'll give you Fig's personal phone number. She'll let you know exactly <laughs> where she's at. Oh, hey, don't you dare. <laughs> there's only one person we know will be there. And with that, I hope you guys have a safe holiday. This See is the San Diego Chicken. Tobin and Leroy Show 560 WQAM. Later, Slug. Game day uncensored on AM 560.